What up, guys? I got bangs. Also, we have another important announcement. Uh, we have a new YouTube channel just for Flagrant 2. That's right. That's how popping these vids are getting because of you. So please, please subscribe right here. Hopefully Alex can put an icon near where my finger is pointing. If not, I look like an idiot. But subscribe to that right now. That's where all the flagrant two clips and full episodes are going to be from now on. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell the world. We love you. Keep it tight. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Flagrant 2, No Easy Buckets, Analysis by Assholes, Water Cooler Commentary for your sports needs. I'm Andrew Schultz. I'm here with Akash Singh, Real Life Cast, Alex Media, and Edin on the ones and twos. And um, we have a very important message to make. I'm not sure if we spoke about this on the Patreon, Akash. Was it the Patreon that we spoke about the kid who... Patreon, OG Smurf. OG Smurf's Mm. sister. Cousin. Or cousin. Yeah. Had a fucked up liver. Need yes. a liver transplant. Yes. Or was going to die. Yes. So he came out to the Patreon. He came out to the people. He was asking for a liver. Now, turns out, a couple days later, someone dies, and then his cousin gets their liver. Right. What? Just the way you say it. Your inflection is funny. Keep Someone died for that to happen. Well, somebody has to die. That's Someone how transplants has, work. Yeah. That's true. Okay? <laughs> this is in Slovakia where that's you can just take you your, your fucking own. liver and you wake up in an ice bath. Okay? This is the United States of America. Yeah. All right? All right? That's what they should do before they kick the Mexicans out is take their organs. <laughs> that's why it's ice. <laughs> 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 you know how I got it. <laughs> Y'all thought it was going to be little I bit? thought it was going to get real fucking nah, dark. And bro. I was like, ah. Nah. There we go. That's right. a good save. So, good save. check it. <laughs> but then, OG Smurf told us within those, what, three days, Akash? Yep. Within those three days, hundreds of patrons reaching out mm. saying, yo, my blood type is O positive. Yep. I but- got you with a piece of my liver. Bruh. Which is crazy, right? Bruh. Then, just got a message today. I screenshot it because I want to give my man's credit. I want to give my man's credit. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Well, I don't know where the fuck he's at. We're not going to take too much time the one here. that's in the group chat. No, no. This, is, this was a different one. But still, a dude hit me today, and he was like, yo, I'm O positive. Ask if OG's... I reached out to OG's brother. I haven't heard from him. But if he needs a liver... Or he needs a piece of the liver. I got you. That's crazy. Bash from Discord. The guy who made the Discord texted me. He said, I'm going to just drink of mine anyway. So, <laughs> so give yeah, it up. Yeah. Yo, so just think about that. What an amazing community to be part of. Like, Motherfuckers are giving organs. I'm so proud, man. <laughs> no, I'm beautiful. so proud. When we that's said incredible. the Army provides, we meant the Army provides. And and uh, it's just an amazing fucking thing. I'm not going to lie. I thought your cousin was going to die, bro. I, I'll be honest with you. Though. When you said it, I thought it was a wrap That's for your like, cousin. Damn. Three days when later. You, when it gets to the point where you're asking for total strangers son. on the Patriots. Like, and yeah. also, yeah. here's son. the thing. And I you mean, know what? fucking dire at Your that cousin point. might have fucked up because he took the first liver he was offered. <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't know what that liver went through. We had some assholes out there. They could have had a much better liver, a stronger liver. Listen, Akash probably has never drunk in his life. His liver is probably... Liver. Akash, Pristine. Akash got the worst health of any human being. My <laughs> lungs ain't shit. You keep, I keep Bro. my lungs. I, they ain't good for nobody. But I bet my, I bet my liver good. Have you said this before? Did you have the immune system of the other Indians? No, you said that. I said, but, <laughs> uh, okay. but it, maybe that'll go on a joke of my yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got the other Indians. Yeah, immune system. yeah. Akash stays getting sick, bro. Yeah, always sick. No, that's right. Don't so give me your no liver, you got to keep. When I go you. to your house, I don't take blankets. I just sleep on a couch. Son, <laughs> I had a bit in fucking, in fucking. Uh, the Toronto show, man. Yeah, it was, it was a little wild. That I don't know. We're, lit, we're releasing it for the inside joke shit. Maybe I shouldn't talk about. It. You guys can see it on the inside jokes. You'll mm-hmm. see it on, on the clips. Mad Indians came through. Bram Ladesh represented. I had Bram Ladesh out there for sure. We'll get to that in a minute. But I want to talk about OG Smurf and how fucking dope it is that like, like what we've created in a community that we're all part of. Did like literally everybody listening to this right now. This is nuts, right? Yeah. There are people they sign up to be on these lists. In the hospitals, right? Yeah. For years, waiting for an organ to save their lives, right? They're on dialysis and shit for years. Son, and then John Q is about this entire thing. Boom. Yeah. And so, if so, John Q a patron, he good. Right. <laughs> Ain't no so, so basically, you have this situation where most people in the world that need these organs, they end up fucking dying because they, they don't waiting. get them, right? Yeah. And everybody listening to this podcast right now, you got another liver out there. You got... 
Maybe a few hundred. How fucking <laughs> unbelievable is that? All right, don't get carried away, son. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> you're going to have a bunch of niggas drinking wild crazy, like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, as long as they pay their $5 a month to the patient, <laughs> you will get you a liver. You know what I mean? You cancel that membership, you might be canceling your life. It's really that. <laughs> it's up to you, dog. That's not even in the captain privileges. Yo, nah. from now on, <laughs> if you want body parts, you got to be at least a lieutenant. <laughs> oh, he was a captain. He was but a captain. Yo, yo, Okay. Up the price OG Smart a little bit. is a captain. OG Smart is a captain. captain. That's why he deserves all, right. all that shit. Facts. But don't be out here with the infantry talking about I need a heart. <laughs> <laughs> I need $25. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get a pinky toe. Yo, infantry could get a pinky toe out here. <laughs> you get cuticles out this bitch. <laughs> so real talk, I, I thought it was an absolutely amazing Hell feat yeah. that we are capable of and like, whoa, so cool. So keep us posted about your cousin. Let's make sure everything's good and if anybody else needs some shit, obviously, you know where to look, man. Wow, that's yeah. just Come so Come to family, impressive. bro. Come family. to the flagrant black market. You ready? No, Yo, real talk. <laughs> <laughs> we need to start that shit yeah. next. Yo, we need to bro. start doing that. Like, We should like sponsor Stub someone. Hub. Yo, who trying to get, we trying to get Bitcoins on this bitch. Find us some Bitcoins out here. Yeah, <laughs> wait, you want to buy bit, Bitcoin? I'm probably going to at some point invest a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wait until it's a drop again and then you cop it. Go if, for if it. If it does. What if that's somebody wants to like, drop? They always drop. But the thing is that with Bitcoin, how it made me feel like it might be the real deal is when Trump tweeted about how it wasn't. And he had a very calculated tweet. Like, clearly some people in power wrote that shit for him. For him. And they were like, if you look at there's a series of tweets, and it don't sound nothing like Trump. And yeah. if you could bring them tweets up. It's a, Trump tweets in a very, like, like maybe like sixth, seventh grade level of English, yeah. right? Mm, it's just no, like... You're giving them way too much. Fair. Okay. <laughs> but this shit was kind of elaborate, and he had a specific point, and he was coming right at the Bitcoin. Is this the shit right here? Yeah, look at this. Um, similarly, Trump ain't saying similarly ever. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was about yeah. to say, that's definitely okay. not I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money, and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior. When would... Trump ever say that sentence? Yeah. Unregulated crypto assets would facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. That's not wrong, actually. Yes. Real quick question: uh, U.S. dollar also based on thin air. We'll get to that, but let's finish these. Right. So it's like similarly, Facebook's Libra virtual currency, and this is where I think Trump was really going yeah. after because Facebook is starting its own digital currency. Yes. They Correct. have their own cryptocurrency called Libra, right? And that's where shit gets fucked up because Facebook has more people on it than the United States has people in the country. Yes. Right. And if you have a currency where they could operate, right, everybody on Facebook could be trading money, spending down. money. Not only does the dollar go down, what is the security that you'll be paying taxes on any of that money? Hmm. Right. Like what is the security that these goods uh, will be yeah. exchanged? Like yeah. if I want to exchange goods from someone from another country, why don't I just pay you in Libra instead of US dollar? It it is it is a dangerous is a potentially very dangerous thing, right? Okay. So because at least when you have to exchange money, you got to go through a bank. You got to mm -hmm. go through Western Union. You got to go do do something. You mm -hmm. want to pay somebody in China? You got to go to. You know how easy it is to Facebook message somebody some fucking Libra, probably. Boom. So anyway, uh, we have only one real currency in the USA, and is stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. It is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. It's called the United States dollar. Tell me that's not a that's promo. That's creepy. Ad. That's yeah. really creepy. That's really creepy because it looks very copy and pasted, and this looks like somebody who who said that out of being afraid. Like, oh shit, this is really it's happening. Not afraid. It's, it's smart. It's being told. Yeah. Uh. This we assume that the people with power, like the president, is the most powerful person in the world. No, absolutely not. There are, are elite motherfuckers who are worth billions of dollars that influence what the president does. Now. Mm -hmm. Trump happens to be one of these motherfuckers, so he's a little less influenced than, let's say, uh, an Obama or, like, a Kennedy who, like, well, I guess Kennedys came from some money, mm. but, like, presidents who aren't, like, part of that billionaire club. Yeah. Like, the Bushes do what the Bushes want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, got, they already bully they billionaires. Got the Cokes, yeah, yeah. whatever the Cokes. The Coke so so <clears throat> the real people who make the, make the moves are the Soroses, the Koch brothers, like, these motherfuckers who actually got the bread, Yeah, right? Mm. So they hit up my man, and they were like, yo, uh, dead that. <laughs> and Trump was like, yes, daddy. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody answers somebody that at the end sense. of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't even know how the fuck we got to this. How did I we, don't know. You, we Black really market. Start, he said something about getting some hair? Bitcoin. <laughs> just let my hair be shitty. Man. I just wanted good, some Bitcoin. Though. I just wanted some oh, Bitcoin yeah, 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 and then we, we got here. We need a flagrant coin, son. We need, we need a currency. So, oh, yeah. So you brought up a very good point, right? Everybody's like, Bitcoin's not worth anything. There's nothing back in it. Yeah. Right? And you brought up the very point, which is 
the so dollar. It's the United States dollar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At, at the end of you know the the U.S. dollar, right? Used to be up into the 70s backed by the gold, gold standard, yeah. right? Mm. So you could literally trade in your dollars for gold. Now, you can do that now because you can just go buy gold, right? So I don't see how that's that different. Yeah. But, uh, this is what I would say to you guys, and I'm sure you've already gotten. Here, I think Akash. the difference, real quick, is the the values aren't tied together. Like the value of gold that's, can skyrocket. Yeah. Dollar stays the same, vice versa. Right. So there was a point in time where the value of the dollar was the tied, value yeah. of gold. Whatever yeah. the value of gold, and then the dollar would fluctuate that way. Got you. So here's what I would say about gold, right? Why does that have any value? That's exactly what I was going to say. Even back then, it is. there's another finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if y'all want to read it, but I just reread it, yeah. and that's one of the things he talks about. Like Money used to be backed by gold. It's more secure, I guess. But even gold is just a value. Money well, we is, put it on. He's, the sentence is, money is whatever we agree it is. So if we agree that these cryptos are valuable, Bitcoin, then it becomes something of value. Right? There's a great episode of South Park. That Th- there's is, real quick. Real, there's a that. good point. It is whatever we agree it is, but what helps us agree on it is the difficulty of replication, right? It is difficult to get gold, or at least perceivably difficult. Right. Where like you got to be in a river with a pan and fucking yeah. Levi's and shit, and hopefully you find <laughs> some. And like, there's a whole Discovery <laughs> Channel show, right? It's like this is difficult to get. Right. Therefore, you have a piece of you know you have a gold necklace. You're like, yo, it took some white guys a long time yeah. to find this, yeah. so it's valuable. If we just go straws, our currency, anybody could get a straw anywhere. Yeah, this shit not gonna have value. So the thing with crypto is I guess they've done it so that the amount of hours it would take you to what I believe is called mine the crypto, yeah. that amount of time to actually mine it would equate to value. Mm, like you'd have to yeah, spend yeah. X amount of I think of there's dollars. only a finite amount too. I think there is, but I think you can also create more. It's just essentially costs. Yeah. So the fact that it costs creates- It has value. Mm-hmm. Creates the value. What were you saying? Uh, I was saying there was an episode of South Park that like, goes directly to that where like fucking aliens come to South Park and they're trying to like <laughs> make them join like this elite like planet club and they make up some fake alien cash yes. or whatever and like the whole fucking county goes crazy killing each other over this fake ass alien cash and yes. the aliens come down and they're like why why are you fighting each other this was a test like this is this is nothing this is thing is space cash or space jail yes. like we just made all this shit up and you guys gave it value and then they they failed and kept them on like the shitty planets or whatever of whatever earth was at but yeah like what make what gives gold value it's just yeah. like oh this is shiny let me this, let, let me give you the best example for it uh the casino you go up to the teller or you go up to the guy at the table and you go, hey, can I have $10,000 worth of chips? He gives you a meaningless plastic coin mm-hmm. yeah. that has some writing on it, right? Right. That if it says $500 on that coin, you guard that motherfucker yeah. Yeah. with your life. Yeah. yeah. It is immediately instilled right. value. Right. You give that to a human being and they'll look at it and they go, oh my God, thank you for giving me $500. Now, try to give that coin to somebody in Cambodia. <laughs> Yeah. They're not going to get like fucked. Like, oh, They're not okay. going to Caesars anytime soon. Yeah, but I mean, I wonder the- if it would be a smart move for Vegas to have a universal poker chip currency that you can use anywhere in Vegas. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. You could take your chips from casino to casino, oh, and they accept it because those chips, at the end of the day, are you're, all based on the dollars. The right? Every value. time you're using a chip, you're not taking money out of our pocket. Yeah. Yo, why the fuck? Because chips are so easy to replicate. Why don't people just replicate casino chips and then go into a casino and be like, yo, let me get my money? So, a uh, couple... Well, another couple, thing, yeah. casinos are wildly, wildly secure. Yeah. So, like, when you walk out, like, there's millions of people watching you on that shit. Like, 100%. you wouldn't no, even make it past that. But if you can make... He's saying if you can make counterfeits, you could just no, no, go no. in with chips. So, I yeah. think what I think what mm-hmm. Kaz was getting at, which is, is let's say you did have a counterfeit and you were caught. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll murder you. It's yeah, over. Yeah, like, uh. It's over. And and it used to be back in the day, you got murder, you got taken down to the room downstairs. Now that it's all corporate, you getting locked up. Mm. And casinos got a weird thing. I didn't even know this was true. They're not a public space. If they don't like you, you're banned. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. They could just ban you. I didn't know that. Like, no, like, know. like, okay, so with blackjack, you know, counting cards... Yeah, you yeah. know that thing where like uh, the, yeah. uh, Ben Mesner, Mesner, I think his name. Yeah, was, it was like the, the first Hangover when home, Homeboy Galifianakis goes can... into his Rain Man and owns how to count. You're right, still right, not right. guaranteed to win mm-hmm. money. It's just a system of beating the odds. Yes. Much easier. Yes, and like basically I'll find a way to calculate how many more cards worth ten are in the deck, and then yeah. from that you can you can mm-hmm. do better, right? There's nothing illegal about counting cards, right? right. You are 
sit, you're not cheating, you're not doing anything. You can do with other people, which would potentially it's just be a skill. cheating. But like, yeah, yeah. it's truly just learning how to beat the game. Even then, if I don't know, I've played blackjack without yeah. knowing anything for like 20 bucks. I ask people, hey, you think I should hit? They don't. The, That's the, right. The, the guy's not teams. like you're cheating. Get the no. fuck out yeah. of here. Matter of fact, if you do the wrong move, it affects him. So yeah. it is in a lot of ways a team game. Right? And a lot of times, even the dealer is like. Not trying to tell you to hit or right. what, yeah. but like they won't, they won't fuck but, you over. But with no, 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 card they'll counting, give you the exact rules. So yeah, with yeah. card so counting, here, you quick. can win. So, so here's the thing: you learn how to count cards, yeah. right? You have a skill that is not in any way cheating. Yep. If the casino knows that you can count cards, they ban you from the casino. You'll get banned from all the casinos in Vegas. Now, imagine the NBA banned Steph Curry. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's, they were yeah. just like, you're too good at hitting threes. You've He's gamed like, the system. I practiced these threes. We don't care if you practice. Mm. You hit too many, you're no longer in the league. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. It's a good Isn't point. It? It's a good point. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I mean, it's, I, think, I guess we love the rush of gambling, but it's so funny that these casinos were ba basically said, listen, if we can't fuck you in the ass, you can't play. The house yeah. always you're wins. You're only allowed to get fucked <laughs> in the ass. Yeah. 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 The house yeah. always wins. That's the That's reason why casinos even make like it. Like, they make it. Like, they will throw you out if you start winning. Not yeah. only do they always win, by law, they will always win. Yeah. Yes. By casino law. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last yeah, thing yeah. before we move on, I want to say yeah. this about Bitcoin. I don't know if this is right. I don't know if friends I have who are much smarter than me were telling yeah. me it's 600 I needed to buy. Yeah. But my money What's was too volatile. Now? 12,000. Okay. And that's down from 30. Right. Um, but when I think about it, everything is flat and connected with the internet. And I don't know if it's going to be Bitcoin, but we're all just so connected now all over the world. The idea yeah. of one currency, it seems so fucking inevitable to me. Of course. That we all just have a currency of that course. we all exchange. Let me show you how on point you are, Akash. You ready? Yeah. This is how on point you are with what you just said. Oh, one here currency, we go. Right? Yeah. That's the currency. That you was, have a credit card. That was a very heavy stump move. That wasn't just, I'm not going to pick it up and show the numbers. Or whatever, no, no, the but, numbers on the back side. I would okay, yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, that was a very my hum point is humble like, flex right there with that, the Amex. That right there, it, not even the Amex. Actually, Amex sucks because outside yeah, yeah. of America, yeah. I, love, it's, it's I love Amex's yeah. fucking brand. Mm -hmm. What they say, Am American Express. Everywhere, everywhere you want to be. be. And then <laughs> you're in Toronto and they don't take it. And you're like, I guess I shouldn't be in this. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? It's a genius marketing They're tool, right? They're basically saying, nah, you Visas don't want to go there. For a decade. If you can't use this card, you don't want to be there anyway. <laughs> but I like Toronto, Amex. Yeah, nah, yeah, there's other places. <laughs> for a decade, Visa's entire marketing thing was... But they don't take American. They would talk about some dope ass place. Yes. But they don't take American Express. Yeah, that yeah. was all. And yeah. Amex was just like, keep talking about us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mad jealous. We'll go so, get Seinfeld. But what was that? They had Seinfeld. Who Visa or Amex? Amex. That's right. They just go get the big people. Yeah, we won. We're good. They're Nike. Yeah, we get the rich people. But annoying because you can't use it. Yeah. Mm. So, but the point is, is like if you have a credit card, let's say a Visa, that's universal currency. Mm. Never once did you like convert your shit when you were in never needed to convert it but there's a lot of places that are like no i need cash oh really i mean like you're at like a stand you know what i mean like so go to the atm machine 100 percent right i'm saying as we gravitate towards digital like all over oh yeah like as more and more places have that little kiosk or a little yeah. swipe thing like if everything is this Bro, my dad used to have a joke. This, You know how you have your dad jokes? Yeah. So my dad, one of his dad jokes was when the check comes, he goes, do you accept cash? Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a dad joke. But, um, bumps. Right? Because right? Yeah. Like, in his mind, he comes from a generation where everyone accepted cash. Yeah. I tried to get some ice cream at Van Leeuwen. Yeah. Very good ice cream place. Bomb, yeah. They, they refused cash. Cash. Yeah. Done. A lot of places in New York like that. A lot of places, in? A lot of places no cash. in Williamsburg. Really? Yeah, What's Brooklyn. that salad yep. spot you love? Sweet, Sweet Green. Green. Sweet no green. cash. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Like my office in uh, in Brooklyn, all like the little vegan hipster spots, it's a very, it's almost everything on that block is cashless. They take like Apple Pay, they take the cards with the chip, but no cash. All the dope new restaurants where you want to be don't take cash. <laughs> exactly. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, so. That's I mean, why I started using the Apple Pay more, because like a lot of actually, it's mad convenient, and a lot of times the places that you go, they don't take cash. Even the ATMs, like they're starting to make the ATMs with like no like card insert. Like you literally just do the double click, and then you're there from your phone. Yeah, from your phone. That's genius. And they do the we fucking the face ID, all that, that shit. Yeah, like it's it's. Uh, there's a Bank of America right down the street from my crib. You just run over so, there, do the face ID, and get cash. So stupid quick. with the cashless restaurants because yeah. like. The ones, the old G restaurants that stay in business, Speak like, on it. it's only cash. Speak mm -hmm. on it. These places are thriving all the time. 
because they don't pay as much taxes. Like, oh, we only made this much today. Yeah, so, but so you're, Cal, say what, explain what he's saying. Explain what he's saying. I so think you know what, what he, Alex yeah. is saying is if you only accept cash, yeah. let's say you make $10,000 in a day, you can easily tell the government, oh, I only made $4,000 today. And how could they? And, and there's no way for it. them yeah. to miss, to disprove it. Whereas with a receipt, there's always a copy. I can yeah. easily just not ring up a sale, take your cash, put it in my pocket. So government doesn't know now. Here's the thing. And this is why shit I think is going to card. Every one of those restaurants started using that digital software called Micros or whatever. Yeah. You know, when like you type the order into the yes. machine. Mm-hmm. That does a sales report. Mm-hmm. And the sales dictate how much money you made that day. Oh. So when the government comes and goes, oh, you only made four grand Saturday? Let me see that sales <laughs> report. You got. Uh, <laughs> oh, why did shit say ten grand? You're like, oh, they walked out on that. that made six grand. They ran out on that, fam. But back in the day, what did they used to do when you went into a diner? Was mm. there a micros? No, it was just That's yelling ching. at the dude. Yeah. <laughs> How much do we make today? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. right on their little piece of paper. So I think that's why it was easier for them to transition uh, to I just digital because they're like, I can't. I'm snitching on me yeah. if I try to keep some of the cash. You Wait, see what I'm saying? No, I'm not fully clear. So yeah, so uh, so you're saying the restaurant wants to do this, or the government makes them do this? What I'm saying is the restaurant uses this program because it's easier, it's right. seamless, it's more functional. Okay. Everything's in the system. Right. You can track what you're purchasing, etc. You can yeah. track what is waste. Everything's in the system. And right. also, yeah. all restaurants and bars use it. So when you so get new, employee, new new employees, they already know. Don't that. have to retrain okay. them. Got you. No tickets get lost. Got like you. go to any diner, right? It's a dude on a microphone yelling to the guys in the kitchen, right. and then you wonder why when you said no cheese and it came with cheese you're like yeah "Yeah, because the guy's just getting screamed at in his second language right (laughs) it's a greek guy who doesn't speak english screaming at a mexican who also doesn't speak english right and you're surprised there's broccoli (laughs) (laughs) on your fucking hamburger right right? right. i thought you said broccoli right so it's like these there's the little shit lost when it's put in the computer yeah nothing lost okay so once it's already in the computer yeah that sale is registered right you can't lie about how much you sold correct and some of the the way the taxes work, because they, they know the restaurants were getting slick, what they would charge you on, like for alcohol, is sales. Right, mm. okay. They don't care how you. much, it's not about what you bought, it's yeah. how much you sold. Yeah. Or no, no, it's, it's taxed on how much you bought from the place. Right. But it doesn't matter. The point is there's a record. Right. Where there used to not be. Yeah. And once there's a record, yeah. motherfucker's like, I ain't playing those. So, yeah. so his point he's is, he's, his point originally is these restaurants are stupid for doing that because they could keep all this money tax free. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got you. And I also think the old ones, the IRS ain't even looking at them because they've been reporting minimal sales for so long. They're like, well, this ain't different. Mm. That's interesting too. Mm. And But also, Alex, that's easy for a mom and pop restaurant. I was about to, to say, the mom when and pop shops. When you're sweet too. green and you got 50 locations and you're more coming and coming and coming, mm-hmm. you can't just be like, hey, fuck credit card, we're cash only. Yeah, yeah you're right. You and know. there's always human error as well too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can uh, always like human forget. Human stealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah human stealing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now you that's talk. when it gets really like, fucked up. It's harder to steal from your restaurant when you got everything locked in. I remember mm-hmm. I dated a bartender she showed me how she steals the Yo, whole thing they Oof. fucking they get a lot <laughs> like, god damn I would say they probably pocket at least 50% of everything they ring up. especially if it's cash and this like, is like almost all bartenders and you're still an animal if you don't tip on a like a beer purchase <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no but outside the tip what they'll do is you'll ask for a Bloody Mary with like a special vodka they'll just ring in Bloody Mary but they're gonna charge you for that Grey Goose yeah mm. right so now that $10 Bloody Mary you you got charged 25 Right. Where's that fifteen dollars go? That's my pocket. Yo, but I'll be honest. There is value in being in, in being truthful because my parents' business. My dad was always like an honest motherfucker when it comes to stuff. They he were believes cash. in paying the taxes you should pay. Like I could have start my like I incorporated my business yeah. right in New York. I remember this everybody day. in yeah everybody in New York <laughs> that has a business incorporates in Delaware because mm-hmm. it's cheap. There's no business tax or something. They're sort. incredibly friendly toward corporations. It's yes. like that's where you should incorporate. They're like like the Bahamas, but in America. Yeah, the Swedish. Yeah, they're I was like about to say, is that like the, the, the Swiss? Yeah, you get your so money you over go there. to Delaware, right? Because uh-huh. they got no business or nothing in Delaware. Yeah. So they're like, fuck it, we'll just be a tax haven. And my dad goes to me, Wait, well, where do you do business? And I go, well, in New York. He goes, well, then you should go to New York. And I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, but they're going to charge way more. And it's like, he goes, but where do you do business? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to do it, right? This is what happens. My parents have this business, you know, dance lessons, teaching dance lessons, and they had took a lot of cash. Some people yeah. back in the day would just pay cash for it. 
Um, so they have, but they pay their fucking taxes. My dad was an honest dude. Nine eleven happens. Every business downtown is decimated. Right. All these restaurants destroyed. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going downtown. People also don't Terrified have money. Terrified and shit. Yeah. And also they lost their jobs. So yeah. many people. So they don't have the extra money. Everybody's being tight. Um, so the government was giving out bonds. And the bonds were based on how much revenue ah. you brought in. So if you were doing a good business. All right. So, so like, if you were. So my parents were honest. They yeah. reported yeah. all the revenue. Yeah. So, so it's then high. When, Exactly. So then when the when they asked for the bond, the government was like, okay, well, yeah, you made this. Here you go. So many businesses were like, well, can we have some money to run? And they're like, well, how much money did you make last year? And they're like, oh, barely any. Because they lied on their fucking. And they made 100 but they only reported 30 So they oh. got $30,000 of the bonds now. And that's the only thing that kept my parents' business afloat. No shit. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. He better than me. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I mean, I, I ain't got to say nothing that's going to get me incriminated. Yeah, but no. yes, I understand <laughs> why certain people will do certain things. And I'm going to just keep it at that. <laughs> so Here's do we what, have a, a go, go? Last thing I'm going to say, if you want to check out this book, the thing that I took from it, even when I, I was 19 when I read it the first time, but mm-hmm. the thing I took from it is this idea that taxes are to punish the rich. Rich people make the tax laws. They will always put in loopholes that they can get around. And Mm -hmm. if they're not necessarily written there, they'll find a way around it. Every rich person you know is cheating in his taxes. Matter of of fact, your your boy on the podcast, what was his name, James? Al Tucker. Al Tucker, yeah. That's... All he was saying. The richest yeah. people don't pay no fucking taxes. Yeah, you guys listen. There's a great podcast I did an interview with uh, with Al Toucher, and he explains really how rich people operate without paying any tax. That's all I've been trying to figure out like in the past like five, six months. Here it is. Ready? Like, yeah. And again, this is super leveled up. This is not, you know, where we are. Of we course. can't do this, above. but this, this is lets when you're, you know. If you're, you know. But this lets you know. Nine-figured motherfuckers. Right? And yeah. then find and then, the legal loopholes. Yeah, exactly. So this is what they've created, right? So what they'll do is this. They'll, they'll have a... Um, a publicly shared company mm-hmm. like Berkshire Hathaway is, is for a Warren Buffett. Okay. Right. And he'll work for that company and he'll get a salary of $1 because all of his salary is stock options. Mm. All of the stock in which he owns, I believe, or something. Or the which majority. He, makes it seem like it's so altruistic. Right. Right. Oh, we'll get into that later. Yeah. yeah he's I always wonder why people do that. So check it. So what happens is this. They make no money, but you need money to operate. Yeah. So what do you do if you need money to operate? You take a loan against those shares. Now, if you guys know anything about loans, <clears throat> you don't pay tax on loans because that's not income. Mm-hmm. So now you have this money to operate and you don't have to pay taxes on it. Now, if you want to pay that back, you can pay that back in shares. So you can be like, hey, here's X amount of shares to my company to pay back the millions of dollars that, that, I, borrowed from that I borrowed from you. Uh, now you've just you got millions of dollars cash and paid zero dollars to the government. They've created an economy that exists outside of our economy. This is how rich people operate. Listen to the whole interview if you want. It's truly fascinating. I'm definitely going to listen to it because I've just been fascinated on, like, how, you know, just being around, like, these, like, super rich motherfuckers and just, just trying to figure out how the yeah. fuck they find these loopholes. I called my business manager. Shit. I asked if I could have my, I could make my company a publicly shared company yeah. so we could do this. And he almost hung up on me. <laughs> 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 he was like, you're not Warren Buffett, fam. No, <laughs> motherfucker. God damn. I was like, we could have, like, five shares. You know what I mean? It don't got to be that many shares. But there's a little shit that's legal that you can do that you should look into. Just learning money is so fucking valuable. Yeah. You have yeah. a corporation, you write shit off. Like, that's, you should be incorporated. Sh- yeah. No, I, I am incorporated. Yeah, yeah. Boom. So, so there you go. You're writing off your meals. You're writing off all every this stuff. single thing that you know for traveling, for like Nike stuff, for like WWE stuff, like any type of fucking shit that I get to work with other companies that goes through. I'm gonna pay Ed in for Revolt shit that comes through my LLC and there you corporation. Go. So if you get is there a difference between LLC and incorporation? Yep. What's so LLC is a limited liability corporation, and uh, I have something that's called an S corp. There's also C corps, and I'd be lying to you if I could tell you the exact details, mm. but each one is a different level of incorporation, and the LLC, I would say, is like the beginning level yeah. of it, and there are certain benefits for an LLC, certain benefits for a C corp, certain benefits for an S corp, and I think as you kind of level up, you change yeah. within that, uh, Yeah, and I'm sure there's com- something completely different when you have a publicly traded company. I'm sure that's probably outside of corporation. My understanding is a C corp. Oh, yeah, you know tax law. No, a little bit. No, very little. I have a C-Corp because my dad studies taxes and was like, this is what you should do now. (laughs) But I don't even know that it was right. But like C-Corp is if it's like multinational, that's usually C-Corps. I probably, I feel like I should have gone S-Corp. He's saying with Trump's new laws, C-Corp. Trust his ass, man. They know. But find people who know money and then learn as much as you can about money. And I remember another thing I just read is like, 
poor middle class people get their expenses. They have to pay all their expenses first and then whatever's left is theirs. Mm -hmm. Smart people, rich people with money who are incorporated pay all... Pay, this is, this is they good. take all their money and then pay their expenses. So when you get a paycheck from a W-2 company, you work at, I don't know, Nike. Mm -hmm. They tax you first. Yeah. Then whatever's left is yours. And then you got to pay all your bills, blah, blah, blah. And then you get a little bit left. If you're incorporated, all this money is yours. Anything I pay for that's expenses, that's my business meetings, that's my mortgages, that's my suits, whatever that you can write off, you write that off first and then whatever's left, that's the income that gets taxed. Mm, you can probably yeah. word this more clearly than No, me. no, I, what you're saying is brilliant. It's so pretty, pretty spot on. So exactly what it is, is it's the difference between a tax refund and then paying taxes. Yeah. So the average person with a job, right? Gets a tax refund. Gets a tax refund. And what mm. that means is the government took more money than they should have taken. Yeah. And we right? get so fucking happy. Right. And we get happy that we get our money back. This is how crazy it is. The government gets a free loan on our money. Yeah. Right? That means you pay throughout the year. They're getting that money that they, you're giving them for free. They oh, can do whatever they want with that money. They can, yeah. they can They can invest it. They can make money on the money that you've yep. given them. <clears throat> Let's say you gave them $50,000. They could put that in a bond. Uh -huh. Right? Make $5,000 on it. You get none of that 5000 Right? They just give you the money back that you deserve because you might have paid too much, and then you get excited that you get your money back, that they already made some money. Yeah. Back, right? What rich people do if you're incorporated is you get your whole check, and the government goes, yo, Time April, <laughs> you got to cough it up. Yeah. But we assume you're rich and responsible, so we're not going to take your money, mm. but you're going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. And that's why rich people get audited. Mm. And poor people, you never heard of you never heard of anybody in the projects getting audited. No, never. I mean, you know what I mean. Like the shit. IRS doesn't break down. They got random audit. I got a random audit once. But here's the but other thing. So you, when you, you might get a, have some shit. Now nah, this is before. Uh, when you get a check, <laughs> <laughs> this my guy's got different shit in his name. Bro. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I had a <laughs> restaurant. Guy's, spelled differently. I got, I got, I got like eight 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 numbers calling him a lot. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, having some numbers. <laughs> I got some. No, I ain't I picking up no unknown numbers. So when we lived together, this motherfucker had all the 800s calling him and he would just send them shits to voicemail bro right. it's put me on it's so funny that they think calling me is gonna make me do anything <laughs> like you're not getting your money back with caller id son is literally this okay <laughs> what we talking about that's it that's all i gotta do to got avoid auto, paying thousands of dollars now they got the auto dollar so when like you call them and you don't hear nothing for a while yeah. and then they pick up and then you just say oh right yeah bye see you later yeah my yeah. folks opened a restaurant in my name shut down i did never pay that back uh, i'm not gonna i was 22 or something why would you and then uh the hospital i have that health care but i don't know if you guys have heard it but i owed like five thousand dollars after insurance and on principle i was like oh fuck yourself <laughs> you never paid it and then i went broke so god got me back but uh <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, here's the other thing I was going to say. What I was trying to word is, if you have a job and they take your taxes out, mm -hmm. then whatever's left, you have to pay for all your expenses with. Right. I have to pay for my wardrobe. I have to pay for my, right. my company meals, whatever the fuck, my meals. Yeah. If you are incorporated, you pay your expenses first. All those things I, are written off. Write-offs. And right. those are an income. As long as I can find a way to tie it to my business, now it's not my in income. So if I made 100000 and 50000 went to my expenses, I'm only getting taxed on half the money I would get taxed on normal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that saves me, you know, twenty thousand dollars, whatever, in the long run. Real talk. Yeah. So, incorporate, guys. Learn money if you get can. it. Learn get that money up because I, I certainly don't know. Yeah, enough, that's so. that's the one thing I really didn't know. Some of y'all be selling your here, livers bro. to make money, man. I know how y'all do. <laughs> you buy some fucking bonds. Nah, but that's real shit, man. That's shit that they don't teach you in fucking college or even younger than that, though. So if you can, if you get some money, make sure you learn that shit. Hey, real talk. If you don't want to learn money, maybe you don't deserve the money. Facts. That's. The biggest facts. Some motherfuckers, that's how, you know, broke ESPN yeah. 30 for 30. Like, the worst thing about that is that you b give a bunch of 19-year-olds millions of dollars for the first time. Yeah. They don't know what the fuck to do with that shit, and that's why they go broke. Yeah. No, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, still, I think I'd be able to manage. <laughs> I think 30-something-year-old like, would be all right. No, but it's like we uh, always do that. Be like, he's only 19 years old. How could he possibly have that much money. It's like, I can figure that out. Well, yeah, well, you've had different circumstances, man. Like, your parents owned the business. Like, your parents, like, knew some shit. Like, yeah, my parents were I financially illiterate. Mad money. Same. What? Like, when I was younger, I blew so much money. Yeah, but you didn't have millions, fam. Yeah. And nah, but I mean, for my age, I was 
doing relatively well because I was selling drugs and I had a decent job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I and I didn't have many That's hysterical. Bills. You yeah. sold drugs and had a stand up <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. I had like fast money coming in and it was just like, oh, bottle service. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was, see, I never did bottle service. That was the most never, corny shit to me. You won't say what you used to do before the podcast, yeah. <laughs> which is a stand up job that's respectable, <laughs> but you will say that you used to sell drugs. So it's back in the day. Everybody said, well, I didn't but why sell are you drugs. so afraid to say what you used to drugs. do? Because then when I say bad things that I did while I was on the job, it's almost oh. putting those people who are currently doing those things under the Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Got okay, so Alex always got a rationale people. that's sound. Yeah, it is pretty good. Dude, I didn't realize how good Alex was at white shit until this week. <laughs> yeah. This guy is... Archery? Son. Was it you were doing? Nice. Okay, we did two things. We he went was to, feeding to get us the bowl before this. I know. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, I knew that something was up. And then I saw your story. I was like, oh, he's been bowling. Like, out of nowhere, we got a group text like, yo, what we should do for content is all go bowling and have a competition about it. <laughs> I didn't even respond like, the first day. I was like, what the f- this shit, bro? I knew exactly like, what it was. Sure, and then whatever. I go to his story and he's bowling a strike, like mad nice. He got his leg kicked to the so side, you like the that reverse form, son? <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, the form was on point. The so Fred Flintstone release. Yeah. Shit. This shit was incredible. And so we're in Toronto, right? And we were doing some shit for dropping in. And um, we went to this thing that's called a rage room. Do you know what that is? Yes. Oh, yes yeah. I, do. I saw your ID, your fashion uh, story. That's all I know. So, so shouts <laughs> to fashion. So, boom. The rage room literally is, it's like. You just break shit. They yeah. give you bats and fucking crowbars. There's it, like TVs in there. There's VCRs. There's bottles. There's everything you so can imagine. Shout out to Jesus. This is peak Caucasity. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Super peak, peak. peak. Caucasity. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. saying that's how Canadians can be nice. Is like they have a, a, <laughs> a, a, a place for all their rage, just right? Go and fuck shit up. So we go in there. Alex is doing fine in the rage room. Not exceptional, but fine. <laughs> um, but before we leave, Alex goes to me. He goes, he goes, hey, bro, do you want to do that? And he points to this to this thing with bow and arrows, and I'm like, "What's that?" And he goes, "It's like bow and arrows, but like uh, he goes, it's a dodgeball with bow and arrows. You, you, should we do that?" But what, bro? We it's you're dodging the arrows, yeah. fam. So. You get a bow, you get an arrow. At the end of the arrow, there's like a tennis ball sized uh, like balloon. tip. Okay, but it's but it's uh, cushion. Is it like foamy? Oh, yeah, okay. like super foamy Nerf. Imagine okay. like a Nerf ending. Okay? okay, you get the real bow and arrow. There's a whole big course like on some paintball ship, not too big, but like the size of like um so it's like fucking elementary Hawkeye. school basketball, <laughs> right? Okay. Elementary school gym. Okay. okay. So um what happens is they put all the arrows in the middle. There's a place where nobody can be shot in the middle. And then there's two sides with a couple things blocking it. Bro, they got rubber machetes that you could throw at each other, <laughs> rubber bottles, and everything. It was two on two, and bro, we played this fucking bow and arrow shit. Alex was Hunger Games in it out there, bro. <laughs> Real life Katniss, dog. This guy was fucking be- like, he was shooting like the black guy shoot guns, bro. Like, he, like, he had his bow and arrow tilted. You know what I mean? It was, was he, like, unbelievable. Popping out of like hidden shrubbery, like fucking Son, Hawkeye. Yes, <laughs> bro. You had, he had one position. He had all yeah. his shit in one position. He was like time it, black guy. Of- <laughs> oh, black guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, bro, it was unbelievable, dude. Dude, it was unreal. Nah, but like, so, that something surprise came me. out. So, something came out. I was like, <laughs> I was fucking yelling at Mark and shit. Oh, he was mad competitive. He was, I got you. Yo, we had Mark. Mark is a little kid. He was doing that little kid shit where you front like you didn't get hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, know, yeah, you play no. dodgeball. It, but it touched me. You out, motherfucker. Bro, Alex was getting heated. It touched you, motherfucker. <laughs> I hit you with that shit. Stop playing. Give me my cock. <laughs> Bro, I was just chilling in the back trying to dodge shit. I could barely shoot the shit straight. What teams is you and Alex, me and Al versus Marlon and um, and Mark. Okay, Word. Marlon, good, funny kid. Uh, you probably, you guys probably know him on Twitter. His name is uh, Dad Dude McFly. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he's funny very shit. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Twitter, I like him. Man. He's like him. Good. So he he pulled up uh, to the Toronto man and shouts to everybody who came out to Toronto shows. Man, that was so crazy. That was that like was a wild. Peak for me in my career, man. Shit that was so crazy, bro. <laughs> That was deserve that, man. That was dope. Thank you, man. But that, that was, was so fucking surreal, man. It was it was an awesome, awesome time in Toronto. Toronto's held me down more than any city in the world. Maybe New York. Obviously, that's home, so it's hard to compare. But y- y- y'all can have yeah. been close to New York. I'm, mm-hmm. I think Toronto's bigger. It might honest. be yeah. bigger than New York. Yo, the New York, y'all got to come out, crazy. bro. November 22nd. But, man, it was such a fucking special experience, man. Thank y'all so much for coming out, dude. It was just so surreal, man. I still don't even. I've been trying to like put in words. I haven't. But even I was been able watching to do that it. video while I was at while I was in Georgia, 
And just like the fucking ovation, like the line around the door Dog, and the fucking ovation. Crazy. I was just like, this shit looks like a comedy special. Dude. Like, it was crazy. It was dope, man. It was good to see, man. I was, was, I was happy to see that. That was the first time where like, there's been times after shows where like people stood up, you know, like, but I'd be so embarrassed. I'd just walk off stage real quick. Like, yeah. I didn't want to feel like I was waiting for motherfuckers to stand. So I'd be like, oh, thank you so much. And then I'd leave. Right. This is the first time where like, both shows, motherfuckers shot up. And like, just to like... Oh man, bro, that's a that's a crazy experience, bro. Earned all it was of it. A earned. Crazy experience. Anybody man. who knows Andrew knows this shit is earned. Every bit of it is. This guy just maniacally working, bro. It Craziest was just... person I know working. Man, it was so fucking. You know what's so cool about it is like to just be there, knowing that like everybody there told somebody else, right? Like like the a group text or a group email. Yeah. Is what made my career. It was yeah. all viral, right? It was it's all it's just like, like word of mouth, it's grassroots, yeah. literally word of mouth. It's like that. That's why if you hate on me, you're a hater, bro. Because like <laughs> you a real hater if you hate on me. Because I'm not here because of me. I'm here because people are like, yo, you probably like him. Yeah, you probably like even this podcast is like, yo, you probably like this. You would like this. You'd listen to this. It's like we got no ads. We got no magazine write ups. No, no company. I don't ever really just, see you doing like press runs with like a publicist and shit. Like it's doing the, the people. Fucking, yeah, like yeah. I, every fucking year, my agent or somebody be like, yo, should we get a publicist for this? I'm like, for what? The publicist is you put out the content, and if people fuck with you, they're They'll the share best it. publicist, man. It's like. There's unique, even people listening right now, there's like a subset of people I know that listen to every podcast, right? Everything we do. And they're the influencers. They're the people that will take an episode and share it with 10 people. Right. Or post it up on Reddit. Or, right. or a world post star. It on Twitter, <laughs> or a world star. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's groups. And I feel like, I feel like in a weird way, maybe, and maybe it's just us, but like the reason why we've been so impactful, this and Brilliant Idiots, and just the stand up clips is like the people that we've, you know, gravitated towards, they're the people that celebrate us the most. Yeah. And yeah, like, man. Like, it's, see that happen, there's something it's different about, like, you know, when I first got into this whole, like, game, the first thing somebody told me was make sure you're of the people, not of the industry. Oh, yeah. Because the industry could turn on you fast. But if they you got, do. like, people, and, and they do. they do. And they do. But if you got people that legitimately fuck with you, they will support you through thick and thin, like, through the good times and the bad. Yep. And you'll always be straight if the people fuck with you. So, Man, it's good to see that, bro. It really yeah, is. Man. It really is. That's man. how you have a career, man. People give you the career. People don't. I mean, it's like, I think these, sometimes the industry, they just don't understand it. It's like, the people are a wave, bro. It's like, you got to ride it or get out the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people are a wave, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, you experience it. Al, did you feel it? Like, Done. <laughs> you remember, I didn't even know how big the venue was. <laughs> I was like, oh, we go into Toronto, this is going to be cool and shit. And then he sh told me the size of the venue, and then it was back to back sold out. Like, after the second show, something hit me, almost dropped a tear with Thug Cry. <laughs> but it was just like, just the amount of love and that many people. Like, yeah. we were just there last year, and it was maybe a third of the size. Yeah, we did. I mean, this was like, that's it's only the crazy. beginning, man. It's yeah. only the beginning. I feel like everybody, everybody that's been a part of this the, the growth of this podcast is really starting to like hit Pop. their stride you know what i mean like even you know like i was like i'm watching your shit like as i'm in at the peace jam yeah fucking like john calipari sitting next to me with fucking <laughs> like Jawan howard patrick yep. ewing penny hardaway like the top coaches in the country that i'm calling and i'm not no comedy guy but like there, there, there's guys that listen to the podcast coming up to me going like this like while I'm doing the fucking the Nike shit and I'm just like yo this shit is fucking crazy bro and then I'm looking at my Instagram story and I'm seeing like the fucking venue and like doing all that shit I'm just like yo the, right now is like a very fucking special time for everybody man so like it was really fucking this weekend was like really special for like Telling this you, whole man. this it's whole shit bang right world now, star man. it's a way tight. bro yeah that clip hit world star man the sylvia clip shout out to sylvia sage man i had to, I had to spend a, a two days in the doghouse but it was worth it for the clip <laughs> <laughs> sure he was upset or what <laughs> why <laughs> for what you didn't do anything i did it i, I did know it, you were just throwing the oops no, like, I was throwing, that's what i'm saying she's like yeah why do you always gotta have porn stars on the show i'm like because that's just slap <laughs> 
Nobody. It's good content. Like, hey, what doing, you never you know? asked me why we always gotta have heat. <laughs> <laughs> why we always gotta have a roof? Why we, why gotta we always gotta have an fridge. apartment? Like, what you mean, yeah, bro? That's why, because we got porn stars out here getting them clicks, bro. So you know how many people? Got the fucking clicks, Their bro. lives were made when they found out all they had to do was get twelve hundred dollars to fuck their Dog, favorite porn star. Yo, somebody. Yo, they, people were going crazy. My DMs. They were like, "Fam, did she really say twelve hundred or twelve thousand, bro?" It became so attainable. Son, I think somebody her prices went up. Son, I'm not, supply, yeah, that, supply yes. and demand. She got flooded with supply right now. <laughs> with demand Facts. right now. Facts. I mean, somebody from ESPN. I'm not going to mention their name. Came up to me and was like, "Twelve hundred seemed kind of low." Yeah, man. <laughs> Hold up, wait, real quick. You better mention that fucking name on the Patreon. Nah, I'll tell yeah, you that Patreon, shit right I'm now. Doing Patreon, Who, but, uh, Amin, Amin uh, said that. Nah, Amin wasn't out there. <laughs> but I'll, White I'll ESPN you know, or Black ESPN? White ESPN. White ESPN. Ooh, <laughs> so, this is interesting now. <laughs> but Kobe, anyway, it was what? Jacoby. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it now. Patreon. Patreon. I got you. That's Jacoby. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts to Jacoby. You just picked a white guy with a black name. I see what you did. <laughs> That's the only white guy's name on ESPN. I know. Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> Uh, who else? Was Scott Van Pelt. Keith Scott Overman? Van Pelt. Fucking Keith Overman. Yo, K O, man. K O is my guy. K O. Always guilting people and adopting dogs and shit. Is that what he does? You ever follow him on Twitter? Nah. That shit is a fucking who? guilt trip, bro. Keith Overman. Oh, nah, 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 nah. Bro, follow Keith Overman on Twitter. His entire timeline, if it's not highlights or like politics shit, yeah. it's just like stories about adopting dogs. Yeah. And like, like boom. <sighs> As soon as you click over there, right, he has a, a whole story on either one. Keep going, scrolling down. You not give a fuck about a missing cat. Something but you like got you got Oberman. You got to read the tweet because he will absolutely guilt trip the fuck out of you. They have a new baby. So after ten years, Cookie is suddenly aggressive and may die tomorrow. They say she growls and resource guards, yada yada yada, and then they give you a link and all that shit to go and adopt a dog. And he does this literally He's every bored, single bro. day. He's just bored. This is what white women do. I'm saying <laughs> this is bored. Yeah. No, I respect it though because I love dogs. To do. He has nothing to do, and he needs a purpose in his life because he no longer got his show. Yeah, right. He no longer. But has... he still does sports center for here and there, like the I, big. I thought the big Oberman's ones. gone. I thought he, he still does like the nah, big sports center. I thought he got no? fired. No, nah, that was a minute ago. They brought him back. They did. He had the, he had his own show, his own like little politics show for a while. Then yeah. they brought him back to ESPN. Yeah, I'm not like just... he had bars or whoever was writing for him had bars. Facts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He would have but those, then he got those... so angry and so political. It's like, fam, we don't want that. It's sports, bro. Just tell me who <laughs> hit the home run, who dunked it. It's, it's not such that a crazy. weird transition to think you could go from ESPN to politics. Yeah, it's like what the fuck? What What's his face yeah. did that though? What's his name? Uh, Craig uh, Kilborn. Remember Craig Kilborn? He oh, was, was he in, on ESPN? He ESPN, was on ESPN, then yeah. Daily Show. But Daily Show was still comedy. Satirical, yeah, so, yeah. It wasn't it was like, like real uh, news. Like their, their slogan was, when news breaks, we'll fix it. <laughs> yeah. And then Stewart came and knocked it out of the fucking park, took it to Facts. a new level. Mm -hmm. So Facts. even that, he struggled with a little bit, mm -hmm. but like, mm -hmm. I don't know, bro. But I still remember him being like the asshole from, what was it, Knocked Up? Was it Knocked Up or 40 Over? Nah, version? nah, nah, it nah, was... nah, no. Uh, old, school. Old, school. old school, old school, old school. Old school. That's what it was. My fault. Was all school. those movies just blend together. That was movie slap, man. <laughs> they did. They were good. Old school wedding crashers. <laughs> Let white dudes back Fuck in a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for a flagrant thought? We could give some of the trans comedies to white dudes. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for a flagrant thought of the day? Yeah, what's our flagrant thought of the That's week? That's mine. Ooh, my flagrant it. thought of the week, I've been had it. Man. Okay, go. Two summers ago. I'm so glad we got over it. How hard it was to pretend to not watch football. Like when the Kaepernick shit was happening, <laughs> then I had to pretend that I didn't love football for like two <laughs> That shit fucking sucked, dog. I'm like, because I'm feeding so hard. Like, I'm watching training camps and shit. I'm watching like Sam Darnold and like Le'Veon Bell get into it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm not like a football junkie, like I'm a basketball junkie, but I'm just like, this is better than fucking baseball. Yeah. And God, how fucking miserable was I two years ago? When, you know, I love Kaepernick to death and all of them, but I was like, fuck, I gotta pretend I don't love this shit. Yeah. People Bruh. get fucking smashed. He settled. So, so he I settled, settled for Channel 4. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, I'm glad uh, all of us is. I'll as, settle into this couch and watch six hours of football every <laughs> Sunday. How about that? <laughs> I'm glad we all got past that, though. Man. That, was, that was dark time. Hey, you you sat in it. I, I walked right past that. You did. As soon as I heard about, oh, he's kneeling. Let me walk by him so I get to a TV and watch the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I respect, you know, I clearly. You I high five him on the way. God damn. That was, the whole time I'm like, there's got to be a better way, Kaepernick. God damn it. 
The fuck I'm gonna do yeah. on Sunday? Watch Big Little Lies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck that? Like that shit was awful, dog. What the fuck? That show's pretty good. Though. <laughs> Is that show it's about Nike show. supporting Colin Kaepernick? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Well, fuck him, though. Yeah. Uh, so football's coming back. Yeah, I watched Jerry Jones' wait, grandson play over the weekend. What's my? Oh yeah, flagrant thought of the week. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. oh wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I got, um, I got one. You. Okay, go. You go, and then I'll, I, I'll come back to my. God, let me. I got a cop a few, please, before this one. Oh, it's a little harsh. So I love black women. I'm. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Hey, where are we going? Where are we going? You know, hey, this you is, if you got a preface it with yo, I love black. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's. A, I got a cop. Hey, please, stop. let me help you, Alex. Before no, 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 judge nah, it. This is good. This stop is it. You gotta let him get through this. You're not gonna woke ourselves out of this fun. This is good. This is good. This is good. Go, go. Kaz, you go sleep for this time right here. My beautiful Listen, black I queens. With you, I Al, love go. my queens. So, and this doesn't pertain to any West Indian women. <laughs> okay. Toronto white women dance better than American oh, black women. Oh, no. Hold on. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Hold yep. on. Let me just, because y'all, y'all might have spoken over that a little bit. Yeah. What Alex said was that Toronto white women, white <gasps> yep. women in Toronto, <gasps> yes. and he has a great white argument women. for this. He said, he told me this argument. Mm. Toronto white women dance better than American Black, Black women. women. Now, yes. I think you have to be a little bit more specific with what what you're saying. So American black. So no, no, like, no, no. But they dance better to what? Oh, to reggae. There it is. Whining. So Toronto, oh. they, can, they can whine. Toronto better white than... women dance better to reggae than American that makes sense. black women. Now yeah. make your argument because I think he said this at first. That makes sense. And I and I was like, man, what the fuck are you even talking about? And then he made an argument that I thought was very good. Go. Okay. So out here, you have all the choices of music. We're this super diverse. This is in, in America. Yeah. So, not all black women grow up in like reggae Rump culture and get ex- experienced. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Every single white woman in Toronto is experienced to reggae early in parties, mm-hmm. and they learn how to dance very early. Mm-hmm. West Indian culture got a big impact yes. in Toronto. So oh, it's massive in, in Toronto, Toronto yeah. right? Or in Canada, we should say they don't have uh, black people. They have. People from the West Indies, yes. people from Africa, people from England, mm-hmm. same way, right? So mm-hmm. it's like everybody there has brought their culture, the sense to of cultural identity in Toronto, correct? In America. Right? So okay. America has black people, Toronto has Jamaicans, Trinidadians, etc. Mm-hmm. So the music and the culture that exists in Toronto, and often why this is why Drake gets, gets clowned. We were talking about that, Drake. When he speaks like, patois, why are you speaking shit. patois? And it's yeah. like. Well, because that's, that's how the culture black in people Toronto. spoke there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it's no soldier. different than like, I don't know, well, you don't experience as a black dude, but like, you know, I've dated girls that don't know anything about New York and they're like, why do you talk black? What do you want to be black? And it's like, they don't realize like, this is how, this is how we, we talk. talk in New York, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so his argument was that's the type of dancing that they did because yeah. the reggae permeated the Toronto culture. So these white girls are dancing at, you know, fucking middle school proms, all this kind of shit. I can see that. Yeah. Whereas black chicks in America, Girl, they might not dance. You're working with some ass here. Back here, yeah, making, <laughs> making cash here. Yeah. Which is still a skill, which is like their type of culture. I think it's a more important skill, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so I just gotta see some whining, bro. Let me show yeah, you a video. I love me some whining, Look bro. at white women whining. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a lot more sensual yeah, than, yeah, yeah. Than, a, than a straight up twerk. That's like the only, twerk that's is the just only like, dance and I do. Yeah, yeah. like, because like, of the twerk. Let yeah. me see you whine. No, no, no. I mean, like, <laughs> with like someone whine else. With behind me. I, yeah, I, I, I yeah, see you know. I see you. <laughs> you know it, bro. Yo, let me see but you whine. Out. Most American women, it's just <laughs> a <laughs> traditional <laughs> twerk where you break bro, a sweat. I'm out there with that. And they try to see how fast you can go. But a yeah. whine is yeah. a lot more sensual. Yeah. It's a lot about, like, proximity and closeness and, like, rhythm to the body. Whereas <laughs> twerking is just, like, like I don't even like what bitches twerk on me. I like, mean, it's it, it, it I'll hurts look sometimes. Do do it alone. And but put this up that I'm sending. Go on, keep going. It hurts yeah. sometimes though. I, yeah. I've I've there's certain women when they, when you ever get into like a girl trying to like twerk on you really fucking hard to the point of like pain. Yeah, I'm like get I, the fuck like, out. Of I, I'm, yeah, this I, isn't I, fun for me. Yeah, like it's it's fun for you. Then. I'll stand here and 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 be the human statue, but it's just not. It, it, it hurts. What, when they twerk on you? Sometimes. Because, like, they'll get, like, ball. Like, they'll get all ball on, on one good twerk. Now, we'll, and you're just not enjoying it anymore. Now it's like just pain management, load management. Question. Like Kawhi Leonard. Will you, <laughs> will you, when, do you get hard when girls dance on your dick? Um, nah, it depends. 
Depends. I mean, like, don't press. I've been yet. dancing. You know, I've been dancing at parties like this since I was in like the, the fourth grade. So, so you'll like, not get hard when they're dancing on your. No. Dance. Okay. Okay. So I don't. I don't relate to you. Sometimes though. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get though. Hard like, to I mean, if I, if I want bro, to, if they're pushing it up on me like that, I get hard, and then I have to decide whether I keep it hard pointing down. But that's right? the thing, though. Yeah. Or do I flip it up and put it on my belly, and then they're like. <laughs> And then they're like rubbing against belt buckle, and it's a whole like gnarly yeah. thing. That's how I think girls get the long like labia and shit. Their pussies get all fucked up. Is that they're rubbing their pussy against belt buckle and like jeans and shit when they're dancing <laughs> as like teenagers. <laughs> I think that's how it is, and it like pulls on it. You know what I mean? It's just like it's nagging. <sighs> okay, so so this is a video little Duval posted. Okay. I, I hope that you guys can get a close up on this in they some can. way. There's no way. No, this is close. fucking unreal. She got a solid foot. Son, nice little arch. wait till you see what she does, and you're not even thinking about her feet. Are we ready to go? Yeah. Press play on this goddamn video. I mean, this is the greatest wine twerk, whatever you want to call it, I've seen in my entire life. Look, look, look at what oh, she's fucking. Fuck? I mean, just the core strength. I was about to say, <laughs> like, that's just athletically well, impressive. What at this is point. happening? <laughs> what? She's bouncing on her oh head. Oh my god! Yes. Oh yeah, oh she's in a she's in a stand a headstand she's in a headstand just on her. This is some Cirque du Soleil shit. Yes, it is. Holy shit! I mean, oh my god, and just built beautifully, is she not? Look at that. Where, where is this? Wow. Black men don't cheat. Black men don't cheat. Black men don't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look away right now. Oh before my I goodness! End up back in the doghouse again. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> so if you go back just to the beginning so of it, here. right there, Eden. Go to the beginning of it. I might just have to reset it. Yeah. Watch this. Go to the beginning, right? Let's say her pussy was super wet and leaking. <laughs> Ready? Just watch. She could drink it. Oh. So, <laughs> she could drink it. She could drink her own pussy juice from that position. That is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. That's the only thing I saw. Or you could bust in her cream pie, and then it could leak out into her own mouth. Wow. That's porn. <laughs> Somebody get That's Sylvia Sage on the phone. Real talk. Real <laughs> talk. Jesus Christ. Dude, anyway. So. Her uh, fucking forearms. How strong do you got to be? This woman Jesus is, Christ. Is, a, is, a, is a marvel. Is a physical marvel. She's got to throw 90 on the, on the 90 <laughs> miles per hour. So. Okay, let's, let's pull back. Let's pull it's back. like rookie of the year. <laughs> Guys, um, okay. Hot shall, in here, right? Shall we talk about some deportes? Maybe we'll an hour later. Oh, let's do a sports story first, and then we'll get it. Sports. Okay. Uh, yeah, the biggest sports story. Russell Westbrook trade. Yes. Oh, we didn't talk about that? No, no. we didn't. That Happy happened Friday, over, uh, during, oh. the, during the... During the oh drop. Gosh. So, can um, I say something? Please. Yeah. My new favorite team. Wow. Is, oh, my new favorite team is the definitely Houston not the Rockets. Thunder. Your team gonna suck. So. The Houston Rockets. You got horrible taste in teams. Let me tell you something. The Knicks, the Let Rockets, me tell you something. Dude, like, what is going on here? If I'm not allowed to watch the Knicks past February this year, which is mm -hmm. usually the case, I will take my allegiances to the Houston Rockets. Absolutely. Uh, that, that they're gonna be fucking fun. They're gonna be fucking fun. They're gonna be coming out to the fucking during the during the NBA style hallway, looking like fucking Zoolander with him and PJ <laughs> Tucker. They're gonna be the best and, uh, dressed team in the league. I'm like, you, are you kidding me? That's like, bro, in Houston, the way that fucking crowd gets hyped up, all that ISO ball, all that go to hell bullshit. Like, they're gonna run zero plays. Like, it's gonna be the most fun chaotic. They're not gonna win shit, obviously. Right. But they're gonna be the most fun chaotic basketball team I think I've ever seen. As long as you think they're not going to win, I no, no, no. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to win. They're just going to be my favorite team to watch. How far like, do you think they far. get? I don't even know if they make playoffs, bro. <laughs> you don't think they make the playoffs? I don't even know. Dude. I don't. I, don't I, think I mean, so the West is good. The West is very. They're, good. they're going up against good teams. They're 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 a they're a you could quote me on this. Okay. They are a first round exit. Without a doubt. <laughs> first Without round a doubt, exit. I'm, I'm curious they're if they the make in the first round. They're the textbook first round exit team. They'll be a great regular season team. I think they'll be a five or four, four or five so seed. So where does Westbrook play in Mike D'Antoni's system? I think he plays the same way that Chris Paul played. There's going to be games that he looks great. There's going to be games where it's like, where the fuck's Russell? That's James Harden's team. Like, they're not going to change what they do. But what would you do with him, right? You have this guy who has elite skills. What do you do with him? So the one thing that I think is going to help them out is that J Russell Westbrook's probably the best rebounding guard ever, right? Okay. So 
if you're not setting him up, a lot of the offense that comes with Russell Westbrook is get the ball and just push. And Houston has a lot of fucking shooters, and they got a lot of rim runners. I think that's where you see Russell Westbrook at his best. So Russ scores in transition. In transition. And half, court, half court, I don't know what the fuck you do. <laughs> that's what, I don't even know where to place him. Yeah. I don't know what the does fuck he, you do. Does he become the T.J. Tucker in the corner? Here's the thing. like People knock uh, Russell's jumper. Mm-hmm. I just think he takes poor shots. I think he just has poor shot selection. I don't think he's a yeah. bad shooter. I think if he's taking corner threes, mm-hmm. I think he'll hit that at just as high a clip as any other good shooter in the league. Uh, in a think, weird way, I honestly— If it's a corner three, I think that's completely in Russ's uh, range. I think when you go out to that like foul line extended— Three, it mm-hmm. might be a little far for him. Same with Melo. It's like Melo's a good corner three guy, but you bring him out to that real three point line, he just it's out of his range. He mm-hmm. just can't shoot it. Mm-hmm. So I just don't know where you play him on that team. And I know that he's not going to be okay with just not touching the ball multiple possessions. I mean, there was certain time. I mean, for most of last year, he let kind of Paul George take the reins on that team. It's just that you know he wasn't necessarily. For Harden, I think Harden will be better off the ball, but right. I just don't see why you changed what's been working for you with free Mike D'Antoni and that's your guy. Yeah. Do but you bring him off the bench? No, he won't Westbrook? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. You do not do that. Even if that's the right <laughs> thing, he won't. And you know he's not going. <laughs> no. I, I, I wish he would because he's going to have to start getting treated like Melo if he won't. He might be. Really? Very Russell soon. Westbrook? Dude, it's just not the right team. And look, I mean, you're not willing to. If you're a. You got to defer to... He was the MVP a season ago. <laughs> you got to defer to James Harden, right? Yeah. You have two to seasons ago. It's his team. You got traded there. But you're the one... Honestly, you need the ball in your hands. You're not that effective without the ball. Right. James Harden isn't that effective either, but he's more effective than you. What I do think helps is... Um, I think James Harden's way better off the ball than Westbrook is. And I think he'll be off the ball because Westbrook will be a rebound fiend and will be stealing rebounds from, like, Capella and, I guess, Tyson Chandler and those guys, whoever the fuck else they got down there. Um, I think if I'm Harden, I probably make myself play a little bit off the ball more. I think you try and get those two that, that two-headed dog thing going and just have them run a little bit more because James Harden's a way better shooter than Westbrook. He's a great catch-and-shooter, not a catch-and-shoot shooter. And... Um, He's played it off guard before, like when he was in Oklahoma City, ex- right. unless when he was like fresh off the bench and Durant and Westbrook are sitting down. Harden played the two guard a lot of times. So I don't know. I think it'll work. I think it'll fu- be fun, but I just don't think they're going to win I just shit. don't know where Westbrook plays in D'Antoni's and It's going to be fascinating to watch, man. Mm. We'll see. I mean, D'Antoni's – here's the thing. D'Antoni's an offensive genius, but he's an offensive genius so they say. within – no, there's, that's, that's without a doubt. Mm-hmm. He changed the game of basketball. Oh, for sure. I mean, you could say he didn't, but like... No, I know he changed the, the game. Yeah, but yeah, like, it's like, no matter... Even your team, the Mavericks play D'Antoni's offense. I don't... I understand he changed the game of basketball. I think Nelson did a lot before D'Antoni. I don't think D'Antoni... I get that he's very smart offensively, but it never really seems to translate. And it's crazy to me that you could be such a genius and so married to a seven-man rotation and that's why you never win and you never change so so and, and here's the thing and, and i'm not saying that's not a, a good argument because i think you do have merit but like you gotta okay put it this way if d'antoni wins one ring he's, he's considered one of the best coaches in history right because then all of a sudden everybody's gonna go well not only did he win but he made it to he the Western the Conference Finals every single year. At the bare minimum, he made playoffs every year of his mm-hmm. career. Like, you'll start looking at what he'd accomplished, and you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. The Team fact USA, that he gold medalist, that's all this one. shit. Even, oh, yeah. like, as a player, he was, like, that dude in Italy. In Italy. Well, outside of player, coaching in Italy. Yeah. Coaching, developing yeah. the system he had yeah. to do, right? So the, the, the issue is, without that ring, we go, none of this works well enough to get the ring. And then once he gets the ring, we're going to start going – Wow, he was able to go that far with just those guys with his offense. So let me amend assistant. what I'm saying. I get he's an offensive genius, but it drives me crazy to watch him refuse to develop a bench. And yeah. every year it bites him in the ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It drives me fucking nuts. 100%. So that's where I was just... But yeah, I get that he's offensively genius. Sorry, yeah. continue. And and you know what? To your point, offense is half the game, fam. Yeah, very true. M- maybe being an offensive genius... Doesn't make you a coaching genius. Right. Because coaching is two sides of the ball. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. But just from the people I speak to, like all of our favorite coaches that we respect the most. Love him. Worship him. Really they really respect him, dude. Like they still do those those uh those seminars where he hosts and pretty much 
tells coaches like how to run offenses, and these are like highly regarded guys, guys who have won championships. Orange County, they still go every to year. Yeah, yeah. All the coaches in the league, they go watch him talk and listen to him talk about offense. Why? The guy he's the, he's the Marty something. Schottenheimer of the NBA. Where it's like, <laughs> Maybe that's, that's great. You just know you're really good at offense, and even though you may not win, we mm-hmm. still want to know if I take some of your offense and apply, apply it to what I do with my team. Yep. Then maybe we'll we'll be all right. That's yeah. how much they respect them as an offensive player yeah. coach. I also think offenses uh, schemes are easier to implement. I think defense is like, I think you have to have defensive instincts. I think like a real quality defensive team. Um, requires much more cohesion, you know, to understand yeah. switching and like understand coverages and how you're gonna play pick and rolls and all that stuff. Like offense is, you go there, you go there, you go there. Yeah, I you set the pick and then you roll. It's not yeah. crazy. You can still have good offense if you don't make shots. Like if I could draw up a wide open shot for somebody every single time down and they don't make the shot, nobody's like everybody's like you yeah. got to hit those shots. Yeah, like yeah. they're they're but we doing got the that. shot we wanted. You got the yeah. shot you wanted. That's that's the that's the term. Defense but. I think also requires emphasis. You got to emphasize defense more. Yeah, and I think Dan Tony emphasizes. It seems like offense more. Yeah, in his mind he's like I'll go bucket for bucket with you. Yeah, he he's he thinks no different than like Kyrie does. Yeah. Like Kyrie's whole thinking is, okay, you scored on me, but I'll go get two. He's the mellow of coaches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, brilliant. In a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, it's like brilliant at offense, you know, not doesn't really care about defense and doesn't win. Yeah. yeah. You know, but like Yeah. So I guess you know, I guess we'll see what happens with that. I'm just curious to see if he even wants Westbrook on the team. That's another thing. He's on a one year deal. He decided not to renegotiate the deal. Who, Dan Tony? Yeah, he's like, I don't I, I he goes, This is the last year. And he's like, well, we'll figure it out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Maybe they figure it out during the season, but I like that. If I mean, you want to re-sign these guys that I don't like, I don't <laughs> want to coach here. What the fuck's the point? Do you True. think Harden and Westbrook argue over the ball? Time? Nah. Harden and Westbrook are like this, bro. That's what I heard. They're I heard like Harden this. and Westbrook are pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. They've known yeah, each other since they were when you're playing together. He's not and wrong. And you used to putting up numbers. He's not They're wrong. They're both different mm-hmm. players than they were when they played together. Continue. Mm-hmm. I think it was Zach Lowe I read talked about this, but like they both... Have become very ball dominant mm-hmm. since since oh, KD left and since Harden left. Hundred percent. But I think what Alex is saying is that like is as as best buddies as you could be off the court. When you're on the court, that personality. So often yeah, is sorry. Insane. An extension of that. They were still they're close because they were close in OKC. Right. Mm. Harden seemed like the guy that no, they were close. both they, they grew to. up together. Yeah, they play ball together. They play, oh, play ball shit. together. Yeah. Like and then they kids, from LA. Like in Cal- yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And then they're both. Uh, in OKC playing together, right? So like they've made uh, it through all that. But another thing, they're both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say like, <laughs> like gang time. Oh, right. like, yeah. It's <laughs> Crips. <laughs> um, they were all at Nipsey's uh, funeral, sitting next to each other. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. yes, it's difficult th- for them to put on that Houston red. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Didn't? Uh, yeah, I remember you telling me that, and I forgot. But anyway, yeah, I, I think they'll be fine oh, for they that. They should have played for the Clippers, bro, and just uh, do that one LA Crippers. Did you jersey? see what what uh, Cron Butler tweeted over no. the weekend? He said what they should do this year to like honor like Nipsey and like gang unity. Yeah. Have like they I think like somebody mocked up like a Crenshaw Lakers jersey. Oh, I thought that was real. Nah, it was like somebody just mocked it up and it just oh. went viral. And they were like, could you imagine if they have a game at the Inglewood fucking forum and have like the Lakers and the Clippers one team red, with Crenshaw? Yeah. yeah. And like they bring out all the fucking unity, all that shit, and do it for Nipsey or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. the, I mean, we'll never do that, but like that's a nice Keep that shit in the true league, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I, mean, you know, I don't know if they're going to go that far. <laughs> like they love Nipsey in the NBA, but you know it'd be nice to see. But I, I, I wouldn't. But what, you, what were you saying, Noah? Uh, they're just both. I think I was saying now they're both so ball dominant that as close as they were, even in OKC. Oh, it's going to be different. together. It's going to be different now because, and I think it's going to be the Miami Heat the first year, where it's a lot of like I defer to you, you defer to me. We don't really know because neither one of us wants to. I think it will be the opposite. I, I think they were way too polite, in Miami. I think it was. Yeah, LeBron. Was was way way that was going. the issue. I think yours or is it mine? Yeah. I think I don't think Harden and Westbrook don't. have that at all. I think Westbrook's like, I want that rock, and Harden's like, I want, I want that, that rock. rock too. But I, what I think, I it, think it works though. Okay, I don't think it works, but what I, I don't think it works, but I think it, I think they can both handle each other better than Chris Paul. Like Chris Paul is annoying, yeah. right? Because <laughs> while the players in the league respect. Chris Paul's ability, they don't see him as a bucket getter. Like nobody in the league, at the end of the day, the alphas in the league get buckets, mm-hmm. right. right? So when they see a guy who's like cute at passing, 
They're like, that's adorable, but that, yeah. like, you're not a real basketball player. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, none of these guys look at John Stockton and go, he was dominant. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's like, yeah. can you get buckets or can you not? Yeah. So I think they look at Chris Paul like, yeah, just set me up. Do your little cute shit where you put your hip in the dude's groin. <laughs> get my man on you and then give me the ball so I can get buckets and do what <laughs> yeah. men do, right? So I forgot when Chris who said is it. talking. I think, I think Kendrick Perkins said, you know, the one thing about Chris Paul that people like hate playing with him yeah. is because even coaches, he has to let everybody know that he knows the most out of everyone on the court. Right. And that could wear on a lot of people. Like if you're the LA Clippers and yeah. like Blake Griffin's young and DeAndre Jordan's young and all these guys are like willing to listen to you and Doc Rivers just won the championship and he and he trusts you with all this shit. <laughs> They didn't get along. That Doc could and work. And, yeah, and they didn't even get along because he oh. always thought he knew more than Doc Rivers. What did I tell you about Chris Paul? I said he's the type of dude whose grandkids won't won't, won't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy ass. Chris Real Paul. talk. He's, yeah. He could. He literally is that type of personality. And you know, I, I just I just feel like this situation with Westbrook and Harden, mm -hmm. there's more respect because Harden's like, all right, I know I can't stop Westbrook. Yeah. Like, I know Harden looks at Chris Paul and goes, I can stop you if I need. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. This yeah. is like, well, you're going to get like, your little foul line extended jumper. Like, mm -hmm. I'll smash that. You can't stop me. But Westbrook and Harden look at each other like, you want to go or what? Yeah. One on one? Westbrook, like, Westbrook's a force of nature, bro. Like, exactly. And so is Harden. Not, and so is Harden, but in, a, in different ways. Yeah. In different ways. But neither man. of them are stopping each other. So yeah. you have to respect them. Like, right. mm -hmm. Whereas, I, yeah, I just think that we kind of overrate Chris Paul's respect in the league. I don't really think guys respect oh, him. Oh, I don't think they like him. No, they don't like him. I think yeah. it's double. I think they don't like him, and I think they're like, he's all right. I mean, he's getting to that point now, though, because remember, and I always used to say this. I always used to say, like, yo, give the same energy to Chris Paul that you give to Melo, because they have essentially the same accolades. Yeah. Right? But people kind of give point guards a little bit more, you know, leeway, because, like, oh, you're a point guard. You must know this, this, that, and the third. Well, Melo was just the guy with, like, I'm a scorer, and that's it. And, you know, people didn't, like, think he could... Well, you can see Chris Paul making the game easier for his teammates yes. on the court. I just think off the court, there the fact that you're unlikable has probably impacted you in the playoffs. 100%. Of course. Imagine how unlikable you got to be where when you play with that person, you undeniably play better and you still hate still him. Still hate him. <laughs> like, think about how wildly unlikable... Yeah. This guy makes me money and I still hate him. The He's old gonna adage He's going to make you $5 yeah. more minimum on your next contract just by being on the team with him. You're going to average five more points a game, minimum, just by him being on your team. You're going to get all easier shots. Everything goes up. But he's so mind-bogglingly fucking annoying. <laughs> you know what just hit me? you'd rather him not be on the team. You know what just hit me? The fucking... So the, the Rockets just signed Tyson Chandler, right? <clears throat> oh, yeah. And they said... I like that move. I like that move. Yeah. And, they said, and they said he was thinking about coming back for another season, but he had to wait to see what the Rockets were going to do. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they got rid of Chris Paul... Oh, <laughs> shit. After they got rid of Chris Paul, that's when he was like, all right, I'll come play for the Rockets. <laughs> and they were teammates, too, so they he were, knows Chris he Paul's was, annoying. He's legitimately... Like, you can put numbers to it. He's legitimately... Legitimately made him millions of dollars. And Ty Shannon was still like, eh, I'll wait till you get rid of this guy. <laughs> did you guys see, see, now they're saying that this is bullshit, but did you guys see the press conference after the, the Rockets lost with Harden? Yes. Where he says. They asked him, what do you think you need to do in the offseason? He they're goes, like, I know what we need to do. And they're like, what is it? He goes, no, we're going to talk to some people. <laughs> now, everybody's applying that to the trade. Yeah. He's saying it's not. He's saying it was like some administrative shit, this, that, the other. But. I mean, that is administrative shit. That's administrative <laughs> shit. Like, Logan, it's like, I know what we need to do. We need to get this bum off the team. <laughs> right? With no bicep definition. Yo, Chris Paul got fat girl arms. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he goes like this, it's Yo, like real <laughs> talk. Like, if you look at Chris Paul's arms, they look like Beyonce fans. <laughs> Oh, that's how the beehive is built. No, that's how the beehive is built. You don't even like black women, bro. I love black women. Like your white bitches from Toronto and shit, dog. Stop it. Oh my god. Got as much facial hair as the beehive too. Let's say the barbs. I just say the barbs. The barbs. They don't exist anymore. Yeah, barbs fell off. Holy shit. Barbs is gone. Man, remember that? Son, Andrew beat the barbs. Ain't that crazy, son? Andrew took down the fucking barbs. Let's go, son. Y'all don't want this smoke. Oh man. Down by the Kens old, out the here, son. The bombs, the bombs the took themselves out. The Kens out here, son. <laughs> Running <laughs> shit, flex on my them. Wrangler bitches. <laughs> the, ass, <laughs> out. the asshole army and the hot girls took him out. Bro. Real talk, real talk. It's a real I fuck hot, with hot girls, girls bro. I fuck with the, the hot, hot girls, girls, man. That's the, That's, uh, the Meg, Meg the Stallion, the Stallion. Oh, okay. her city yeah. girls. All, yeah. all their I love this beef. The city girls versus the the city boys versus hot boys versus the hot girls. No, no, city boys versus the hot girls. 
Not not this. Yeah, but it's basically great. just like anytime, like it's just like it's fucking brilliant. It's just fun shit. You gotta man. follow Duval. Yeah. He's got the he's doing play by play on it. So basically, anytime a girl <laughs> fucks over Duval a dude, that. yeah, right, like. Yeah. Let's say kicks a dude out of her house yeah. or like, you know, makes a dude look stupid or like, it's like hot girls up by 20 back to you. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you get, they get points. They get points. And then anytime a dude does some shit to like this dude kicked his girl out on the, on the, on the freeway and she just started walking out the car on the freeway and some other dude was filming like, Oh shit, that's 50 points for us. Yo. <laughs> City boys killing it. So they've created this like hilarious it's dynamic. So funny. Oh, dude, and even like Meg the Stallion gets on. She's, oh, she's <laughs> she like, with it? Yeah. No, nah, she's absolutely with it. Like oh, she'll tweet it. stuff and be like, Oh man, God, it's, it's a long summer. We're still we're still down, but we're not out. And da, 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 da. Like anytime some shit happens, and then like future tweeters some shit. It's, it's just Barb's fun, ain't man. even in the game, huh? Oh, nah, I don't bar- give a fuck about the Barb's. Are in the, they're in the they're in the consolation bracket. So, <laughs> the Barb's are about Beehive as real is- as those unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Beehive is at the game. They're just at the concession stand getting fucking raisinets and. <laughs> Yeah, see, I, I still, I'm still really not going to fuck bro. the beehive, bro. I'm fucking with the beehive. I'm beehive. Yeah. I saw so live. That's how I know they're annoying. No, 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 no. You're not beehive. You like You're a Beyonce, Beyonce fan. Okay. We're Beyonce fans. We're yeah. not fat girls with nothing to do. <laughs> oh, my God. Fat girls with nothing to do oh are beehive. God. Right? Fat girls with nothing to do, bro. The only exercise their arms get is tweets. That's why they look like fucking Chris Paul. Oh, it's your fat ass arms man. wearing a white beater. <laughs> fuck out of here, bro. So, Built like yeah. a pile of mud. <laughs> you like the dookie bitches. emoji. Real talk. That's how they built like the dookie emoji, bro. <laughs> That's what they you. say about Thor and Endgame is they look like melted ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Thor and Endgame is how these fucking Beyonce girls look, bro. I mean that 100%. Built like a honeycomb. Oh, <laughs> Built <man>. like. <laughs> Built <laughs> like a honeycomb. Real yeah. talk. Right. Built like fucking minions. Despicable <laughs> me ass bitches. Facts. The Despicable who, B. Who said that shit? They look like the Mucinex. The <laughs> Mucinex. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie said that though, right? Didn't no, you say someone that? said? Was it Mark? That it looked like Mark oh, said it, right? Man. What was it about? Because it was some girl. Had like green on, just like <laughs> shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> look like the Mucinex, son. <laughs> Bitch look like a wisdom tooth. I saw that one. That shit killed me. Somebody oh posted. Somebody po- who was it? <laughs> Duval? Somebody, like po- a tooth. somebody posted this dude. It was Duval had a dude in his uh, what's it called shorts. Uh, in his uh, rich, rich broke bro. shorts, and uh. he was fat up top, and he has skinny legs. <laughs> <laughs> Some chick goes, he looked like a wisdom tooth. <laughs> you know how the wisdom tooth yeah. got the long <laughs> curl on the bottom of his fat in the top. So oh, oh, fuck. Oh my god. Oh, bro. So fun making fun of fats. <laughs> oh, god. Oh, fatties. Son, Beyonce mm. fans. But shouts to Beyonce, though. We love, love Beyonce. Beyonce. Love Beyonce. Queen, Queen, Queen B. Queen B. Hate All them day. motherfucking beehives. That beehive bro. is some shit. Real Kingdom shit. don't deserve you, then beehive don't deserve you. Facts, facts, facts. You see Yo. Lion King this weekend, bro? Nah. I ain't seen no fucking Lion King. I got my ticket. See, I got my ticket with Beyonce ticket, fans. Yep. Exactly, bro. God damn. Yeah, well, you better, you better get there early so you beat these bitches <laughs> stampeding in the fucking theaters. Son, no, real talk. I heard they use actual Beyonce fans to kill Mufasa. <laughs> oh, I see? Like, shit. Oh, shit. No, nah, they did. Like, <laughs> all oh, the extras, God. they were going to CGI it, and they were like, why don't we get these fat bitches that be tweeting about oh, Beyonce all day long yeah, no, to Beyonce just run down this hallway? They made quite an impact in cinema. Remember Jurassic Park when the water was just <laughs> shaking? Real talk. That was a Beyonce fan breathing. Breathing is what I was going to <laughs> Yo, that was a Beyonce fan. She just took one deep breath. She just went. <laughs> <laughs> just the nose. Water just shaking. Are y'all Real trying to thought. say instead of wildebeest that wildebees? <laughs> Yo, the wildebees. The wildebees. Was doing it, bro. <laughs> I mean that shit. Yo, but we're gonna get back to making fun of these. Uh, Beyonce fans a second But yo We got a new sponsor y'all Oh we got a new sponsor We got a new sponsor y'all We out here killing it Now Akash um, This is the beauty of Of when we get sponsorship Is when there's Organic symmetry Yup So I was telling Akash About the new sponsor And he goes Oh I know them I already subscribed to them Been subscribed Been subscribed I was like word He goes He goes yeah absolutely I said Akash Then take it away my brother Because you know this Go for it It's my first time Doing a read So hopefully I don't no, fuck up No you don't up. gotta read oh, Talk from the man, heart From the heart I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I hit all those points so the company, You talk from the heart The dog. company is The Athletic Yes It is a oh, no Sports shit. website I love Cass, The Athletic Cass That's awesome too, right? Yeah That's, hey, look that's awesome bro. bro we out Synergy. here Look at that Yo. Synergy Go on, <laughs> they get it. it is a sports website that you have to subscribe to it, but it is legit, good, in-depth journalism. It's not like 
a bunch of shitty pieces that you read on some other websites or like you got to pay a really high price to read the good articles. Yeah. This is a reasonably priced website that has good sports articles. I've bought brought articles from The Athletic to do segments here. Mm. Oh, really? We had one about Ka- uh, LeBron and Kyrie and how everything split apart yep. and like evaporated with them too. And that was an uh, article I read on The Athletic. Right. A couple dudes from The Ticket, the station I always listen to, right for the Dallas pages. So like I pick my favorite teams are the yep. Cowboys and the Mavericks. And there's dedicated writers. So you can follow certain teams or you can follow cities as well. You can follow yeah. certain teams. Love so that. I don't have to follow the Rangers because you don't want to give a fuck about the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank Yasolo who writes all the Knicks stuff and the NBA stuff for them. And oh, my I know boy, Frank Yasolo. Uh, he writes for the yeah, Post, right? He got Shams, yeah, yeah, dog. Over Shams is over there. Oh. And my boy, uh, Big Waz, we did the show together for Uninterrupted yeah. Yeah, LeBron yeah, yeah, James. Yeah. He has the Count the Dings podcast with Amin and all those other guys. That's on The Athletic as well. So I fuck with The Athletic, man. The Athletic is dope, man. Yeah, dude, it, it is uh, from, you know, obviously I looked it up uh, a little bit. I wasn't as you know privy to it as you guys were. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it, it seems like it's more of the in-depth article. It's not just recapping like the stats. No. This is some, like a theory yeah. or an opinion. or There's some really take. good articles on there, yeah. Yeah, and it's cool. And uh, especially what I what I kind of like is when you get into this downtime of sports, the baseball time of sports, yeah. mm-hmm. there's the actually, <laughs> right, there's more time to cook up theory. Yeah. Right? I think this is when articles are actually at their best in sports for me, right? Mm-hmm. Because now we got some time to think about something interesting about basketball. During the season, it's like, okay, recap, we recap, all recap, to the recap, races. Recap, What's recap, good? Yeah. Like, okay, are the Game Rockets going to do yeah. it? Not, you know, but when you got a little time, it's we're going to tell you how that offense is going to work in Houston. We're going to tell you right. what the Clippers should do, you know, during midseason, this, that, the other. Right. So, I don't know. It, it's cool. I'm on board now, obviously, because they're a sponsor. But I love the fact that you guys knew all about it. Um, and it's dumb cheap with the flagrant discount code. Dog, subscribe to The Athletic today. You go to theathletic.com slash flagrant2. You get 40% off a yearly subscription. Now, that comes out to two ninety nine a month when you subscribe at theathletic.com slash flagrant2. Theathletic.com slash flagrant flagrant too. All right. Writers that you're going to hear from me, obviously Shams, shout to Shams, David Aldridge, Sam Amick, Zach Harper, Ken Rosenthal, Jason Stark, Seth Davis, Pierre Lebrun, Stuart Mandel, Bruce Feldman, and Jay Glazer. I mean, coverage goes beyond game recaps. It's it's smarter analysis, deep perspective about teams, the leagues. Uh, listen, it's everything and, that we just spoke about. And if about. you have a team that you love, like for me, again, Maz, but especially Cowboys, the best Cowboys writer that I like for me, period, on the athletic. What's Bob Sturm. Shouts to Bob Sturm. Also so, works so for the you're, ticket. You're that devout in terms of like following. Oh, so, by the way, guys, before we segue away from this, it is theathletic.com slash flagrant two. So, you're that devout in terms of like uh, following a writer in their perspective on a team? Yeah. I mean, especially with this and like finding the topics, <laughs> I try to read a bunch of sports stuff, but then. So sometimes that's like kind of work and then it's like oh I could read about the Cowboys it's just fun we're probably not going to talk about it do you do, will you read an article about something this is for you too Cass mm. will you read an article about something that you might not really be that interested in but you like the writer so much that you'll oh, give it oh all the a time t- Yes. All the time. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few guys that I really like from Sports Illustrated. Uh, I, I like Chris Mannix a lot from um, SI. I think he's at Yahoo now. Okay. Um, I forgot the dude's name. Uh, Lee Jenkins, another really Lee good Jenkins writer. Is good. He's somebody who anything. He did the LeBron letter. Who did MJ at 50? Wright Thompson. Mm-hmm. He had one about Tiger. I wasn't that interested in Tiger, and I read it, and it was a fucking great yeah. So there are certain guys that you, you believe in so much that you're like, okay, I'll give this – article about Absolutely. baseball try or give this article about volleyball try because you're going to have an interesting yeah another guy Don Van Natta yeah. I was looking up his name Don Van Natta another guy writes like crazy like in-depth pieces huh. that are like if one you're remotely f- interested in a subject just read it it's yeah. good one of That's my first dope. favorite writers we should was, get uh, one of these guys here that does um, with, yeah. like long form pieces not yeah. the quick shit like the Don guy Don Van Natta is a dude who writes in-depth same with write like mm. in-depth they spent Don Van Natta spent a whole summer with Jerry Jones see yeah. I'm curious about that process because that piece is a written documentary. Yeah. yeah, that's what they are. Right? That's what they are. It's not like, oh, I, we <clears> caught <throat> a few minutes it. with him after the game. It's like, no, they no, we follow you. Yeah. 
to wherever it's like, oh, he had something for breakfast and da da da. My man like, just drank Johnny Walker Blue with Jerry Jones <laughs> every day for an entire summer. We gotta yeah. find out like what makes these guys want to do that with the written word and why. I mean, that's what I wanted to video. do for most of my career. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's what I did with like rappers. But you also did television too. You've yeah. produced, you know, and yeah. These guys don't have a huge line. interest in being in front of the camera, yeah. being a celebrity. Yeah. Right. yeah, like I mean, that's you know, my, my that that was my break when I was at the Source and like Hip Hop Wired and Stash and all that shit. Like it was following you know the careers of like rappers and like right. some athletes and because and the only reason why I got into the athletic stuff was because I wrote so much good shit on rappers that like they needed somebody to go cover the sports shit and they wanted to be in those like stories with like hip hop culture as yes, well yes, so yes. that's how that all worked out but yeah like people make a great living doing that shit too man just like making those great stories huh. when you know I mean it's well, a little harder the, now because it's digital what's and, like, the emotional like, motivation I mean the emotional motivation is like me, when I grew up, like I grew up on all these magazines, you know, and I think the written words just kind of <clears> got a little devalued a little bit just because, you know, shit's digital now. Yep. And, you know, I guess and, and it's a different it's a different uh, no, feeling still of power to the written word. man. There's definitely power to the written word. Having it's just it's a little different when something clicks now and, yes. it, and it goes viral and a lot of people are reading it. Yep. But to me, it was just the fact that I could hold something in my hand. And be like I created this like yeah. that was it for me. Like I didn't need any more. There's satisfaction. something about a quote that like. <clears throat> it becomes factual. Yeah. Right? Like, if something is written about you. Right. And and we use that excerpt. It's like, you know, Akash Singh is, is a marvel of a comedian. Right. He is this generation's Indian voice or something mm -hmm. like that. It doesn't matter really where that's written. Yeah. The fact that it's like that written it's in quotes, for some reason you're like, okay, that's... I believe that. Why the fuck is that? I why don't know. do we? Why is it? Because journalistic integrity, man. Like it's not so just we still somebody. Have val we still value the words that are on paper. More I think than we who? just believe what people tell us, and something about seeing it. Yeah, this is, I guess, what you're getting at. But seeing it somehow makes it more legitimate than hearing it. Why? Mm -hmm. I think also it's like a hard bar in rap. Yeah. So you'll remember yeah. a bar. Yeah. You won't remember a song. You might not even remember who said the bar. But, you're but you'll just remember a favorite rap, Your favorite yeah. rapper's favorite rapper. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it is. You're like, so oh. it's like, I, real, I did real songs with big, no made up shits. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like those are hard bars. Hard bar. Like to put in words together, even comics, like when you guys, if you just say yeah. something. Yeah. A little bit differently, it like can change the whole meaning. So of you're it. saying it's more than just the fact that it's written. It's often that this thing that's written is just done so well. Is done with art. Yeah. It's done with care. Okay, I think that's. And fair. there's something about these in-depth pieces that I identify with as a stand-up, where like there's so many fucking bloggers out there and like soft articles that mean nothing. And I look at them like. That's cool. They serve a purpose. It's like Vine videos. That's cool. Yeah. That right. thing. Is, but then like an in-depth thing where you follow the guy for a whole summer and you write. It's like stand-up to me. It's like I get there's not as much room for this maybe, but like this still is art that you put something into. Okay, or like, so this I'm, is a, a, this I'm a, is, a journalist. This down to me. Question okay. guys. Go ahead. When you have one of these long pieces, we're yeah. talking about like a long piece. Mm -hmm. Right. When, when you sit with that, are you consuming that in one sitting or are you knowing that you're coming back Multiple. to this? And I enjoy, no, like, I don't want to finish it. I want to come back to it when I'm, like, bored. I think that's why I get fucked up is because I'm in this, feel like, pressure. Yeah, I'm like, wait, do I have to finish this right now? I, I, maybe I have to remove myself from that expectation and treat it more like a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, is it's that, a mini book. It yeah. is a mini book. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, what were you saying? No, I mean, like, just I, I, I'm, uh, I got a journalism degree. Like, that was uh, yep. what I went to school for and all yep. this other shit. Game. So when you're making, a <laughs> 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 so when you're doing these long pieces, like, you're essentially saying, like, this is an authorized telling of this person's life. Mm. It's almost like what? a small autobiography that you get from them because. They're giving you the access. They trust your word. You've built up your reputation enough so, you know, mm. fucking this rapper who's or this person who's very well known trusts you with this person's story. Yep. You, you can't write an autobiography for everybody that's like a novel long, but if you can give a small window into someone's life for that long, especially now with the advent of like social media, you can kind of see instant reaction, right? Whereas back in the day, if you wrote like a bad story, and you know the person that it's on didn't really fuck with it. Yeah. They just kind of had to eat it, or like if they'd catch you in traffic or some shit. Like yo, that shit that you wrote about me was fucked up. Yada yada yada. Right. Now it's almost like you spent a week with Donald Trump, and here's the story on it. And Trump is like, "This is a great story." You're kind of looking at it like, "All right, like this." It's it's almost like a cosign. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. it's 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 weird. I think, it's I weird. Think like there's so many other things that come. There's comes other to, layers, especially and for people listening right now that like aren't as old as us and mm. grew up completely in the digital digital age. Maybe they don't have the same connection to it, but like there was a time where there was a lot less things said. Yes, and, that's that's the perfect way to put it. And where they were said was often in print. Yeah, and there were a handful of names that wrote about things. Right, especially yeah. sports. Mm-hmm. We can name the sports writers of our childhood. Oh yeah, the Peter Vessies, right. Bob right? Lee, like, yeah. Bob, uh, yeah. Woody Page. So, uh, all so those think those. about that, right? Like there were a handful Even of Skip opinions. Bayless. Yeah. Skip, <laughs> right? Like there was realistically, nationally, there was probably ten opinions on basketball. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there was less. one show. It was, the, was sports were spo- the sports reporters on Sunday. Dude. They would have all the reporters sit in the fucking desk, and they would talk about their fucking takes of the week. So think about and that. That was pre-first take, pre- Saying that a player that was overrated, mm. right? It became truth yeah. Yeah. because there was less to dispute it. Right. Now, one article mm. is saying LeBron is the best ever, and the next article is saying LeBron's not even top five. What and the credibility takes a hit because everybody needs attention. So they'll just say the wildest thing, which yep. just skips MO. You didn't have to do that. Because you, you, no. you were the attention. And that's where the journalistic integrity was a big factor. It's like, why do I? I don't need to say some shit I don't believe. Whoa. Not that many of us. So this fake news thing, it's not that like fake news has always existed, but it is a product of a lack of interest in news. Yeah. Or rather, a product of competition of ideas. Oversaturation. It's a, and it's so also a product like, of more voices. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Well. Oversaturation yeah, of ideas, yeah, yeah. right? So it's like just as um just as you increase production, quality goes down. Yeah. You know, like when you start as a clothing brand that has one store in Soho, mm. the, the shirts are made with the finest silks or whatever. Yeah. Eventually when you're in Walmart, you're down to like cotton Fucking hybrids. Free birds <laughs> burritos in Santa Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara's yeah. amazing. And then it becomes it became a chain and now it's whatever. It's whack, right? Yeah. So the same thing happens with journalism. It's like when you have way more opinions, we have to water it down. Yeah. Or they end up getting watered down. So in order to spike up and get some sort of interest, you have to have the craziest idea. Yeah. Wow. yeah that's kind of that's kind of why I got out the Fake news exists. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that one hundred percent. That's yeah. whoa. That's the thing with bloggers is that that's why they're hard. It's easy to shit on them. They're easy targets because it's like, yo, your whole thing is just trying to make a career on an opinion. Mm. So you pick the wildest opinion. All right. Like mail for you. Say what? Daily Mail. Oh yeah, that's right. When they fucking what they, was the article? More people are more likely to click. Oh, it was the seizure clip? Yeah. <laughs> people yeah. are more, more likely to click Andrew Schultz makes jokes about woman seizure than Andrew jokes. Andrew Schultz makes light of tense situation in comedy show. Right, right, right. right. You know what They're I mean? Just going after clicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I got to get people to click. We're yeah. all trying to eat. Everybody trying to eat. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, I guess we're in that same, we're in that same boat. The tricky thing with with us is like, I think you lose value with your listeners if you lie. So we have to find the sexiest way to describe something that you feel actually satisfies the expectation yeah. so when we say like the economics of porn or the real way porn stars make money motherfucker it better be the real way yeah, yeah. they make money you, yeah. right it's like because you lose credibility man and and before when you lose credibility you would just kind of like write another article you could write another article <laughs> and like, make it up but like now if you lose credibility that can literally affect your bottom line well, and, you i'm know, not clicking on that shit because you lied bullshit. to me yeah like i, I used to watch vlad tv all the time and then, like, five years later, when I just see this bullshit half the time, I'm it's just like, all right, I'm good. I had to get you on know? that. And I used to do it a, I used to do it a bunch, and, mm-hmm. and I appreciate Vlad for putting me on and, you know, giving me that opportunity. Yeah. But um, it was weighing on me. Like, I would get yeah. on Instagram. It's so aggressively got negative, every man. Every single fucking time, and it's just yeah. like... Like the Adam Twenty Twos of the world, like the no jumpers, like mm. the acad- like even that's how DJ, that's how academics fuck, got I on. I fuck with Adam. No, I fuck with Adam. I know you guys got beef. Why is he called no jumper? Uh, I have no fucking idea. Uh, no, it's a, I was in a Gucci a main uh, balling like uh, balling like this, but I got no jumper or something. Oh. I think I, it's a Gucci uh, okay. man. Okay, balling like a whatever, but I got no gotcha. jumper. Um, what, why don't you fuck with Adam? He got to Tiana Trump first. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just think the shit he does is kind of like very detrimental to like hip hop community. Like what? Oh, like interviewing the the shit that he like the shit that he perpetuates because he has such a strong following. Right. That you know, and one time, and you know, hip hop culture. Granted, it's great at how how healthy it is, and there's different avenues for different shit. So you don't just got to be like, oh, this is what I like because like that's everything. It's like fuck it. But <laughs> but now it's just like when you know that the negative shit works, 
and you just do it over and over and over and you kind of really don't care about the blowback from any of that shit because you're kind of eating off of it even though you're kind of destroying a lot of people's lives that you may not notice because you kind of got horse blinders on right it's 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 <clears throat> real distasteful you know what i mean like and you know motherfuckers like die over shit like that like why would do you, you think do that? that he's he's promoting people's lives being destroyed like <sighs> and and that's the thing like He's not outwardly doing it, but like I feel like once you get that sort of of power, you kind of use it, you got to use it responsibly, and I don't think he does it. I'll right. say I what Kaz is trying to say. He finds all the young SoundCloud rappers, which tend to be black, takes advantage of them because they're young, fucking dumb drug head, and pill head, they're not as experienced yet. Yeah, and so he exploits all the fucked up shit that they're doing because right. these young kids don't realize. You know the full repercussions that can happen, and Adam is just profiting off that. How are you going to try to Cliff Notes Kaz and then talk for longer than? Him? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I pulled, I pulled the Kaz no, I, I understand. I, yeah, I, I understand you. what you're saying. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I guess, and maybe Adam looks at it like, I'm, I'm curating these guys' careers. Like sometimes you come on my platforms and I post your shit, and you could, you know, do tours and actually. Yeah, make so real talk money. about the music. Don't talk about the fuck shit. But we all know that we care way more about fuck shit than we do music, right? Yeah. It's like, which is, you know, but then I mean, that's puts, why world he song. knows that they can get in trouble. So it's like he knows that. But he's not stuff. forcing nobody to say anything, right? I, I think your argument is like they're young and naive, and it's like you know that this is maybe bad for them. Yes. Right? So it's like you're. They look you, at it as predatory. You have, yeah, you have like a it's social responsibility yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. And, but what I'm saying is maybe <clears throat> it just this is because I fucked with Adam. He's all, all been cool with yeah. me, and I've been cool with him. Is it maybe the way he looks at it is here are these young kids that I'm actually giving an opportunity to make legit money so they don't have to be out here doing this hustle shit, do this fuck shit. Like, you could actually just make your music, and if I give you the outlet and I organize these tours for you and that kind of yeah. stuff, now you don't got to be selling drugs in the street and fucking shooting people. Which I totally understand. I just don't need to respect it. No, and that, I'm saying maybe <laughs> that's his, like, int- remember, I'm always trying to judge people off intent. No, I get it. Maybe that's his I intent. totally get it. And, yeah. I, and, and, obviously, and honestly, like, I'm sure there's a lot of truth to that, but at the same time, it's like, I don't need to respect it. Like, I'm, I've seen it done a different way. I've right. seen it done better ways that didn't lead to other shit. So it's like, right. all right, I see what you're getting at, and I can't hate on you for getting your money and getting other people's money, but I've seen it done ways where it doesn't lead to something so destructive. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm good on it. That's fair. It's almost the way I look at TMZ. It's like they're pretty credible most of the time. It's just the way they have to go about getting their clicks is like, come on, son. Right. Mm. You know, it's it's, I just extra. feel that way. Like, Interesting. You can do it better, but you choose to just go about it that way. Yeah. Yeah, which I don't respect way. as yeah. much, but I still see why you do what you do. And uh, and to to be fair, that's kind of how I looked at Barstool at first. Before mm. like I really started to, you know, see, you know, visit the site and visit the content and kind of see what they were going at. I kind of used to look at Barstool like, you know, like it was kind of like fucked up content that they would post and the, the way they would do it. The biggest misconception of Barstool is that people don't realize they're in on the joke. Yeah. Like, if, yeah. if you actually are a fan of Barstool, they're making fun of themselves. Exactly. Francis Ellis is super self He's not Barstool anymore, but super self-aware of KFC, how you see self-aware. Him. Like, even if yeah. you go to the account, they're calling, like, these, like, white dude bros that are doing shit. The they call them all Chad. No, they call them Chad. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> if the caption is always, like, Chad, finding the love of his life. And it's, like, a dude just making out with his pit bull yeah. or some shit right. like that. Yeah. But, like, no, they're they, aware. They've commodified bro culture. Yeah, they've commodified it, but yeah. they're not um, unself-aware of it, right? Yeah. They're, like, we understand the absurdity of this. We will Absolutely. lean into this. Absolutely. But the average chick and that writes about it and says it's sarcastic, she has no clue that they're also making fun. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. That's what I didn't get at first. Before, right. when I used to watch it, I used to be like, oh, man, this is fucking terrible. How did I not know? It wasn't until I knew, like, it's almost like it's more of a condemnation on, on how you feel about it, the way you react, than yes. how they do. Yes. You know, like, it's like, if you're offended by this, you're kind of part of the problem because they're in on a joke. Like, so how are you not it, in on a joke? You think it might be the same with Adam, no jump? It might be. It I might be. I just that. know that there's different ways to go about it. Like, I get, I get it more with Barstool because to me, I guess, like, sports is a little bit more fair. Whereas hip hop, like, just I just I know the politics of it. Like, I know the politics right. of why and certain like people lives get. People don't die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like motherfuckers are gonna die. At the end of the day, like you can say whatever the you want. Thunder trade ain't killing nobody. Yeah, right. Like yeah. you could say whatever. You, I could say fuck Boston all, all day long. Like all they gotta do is just beat the shit out of the Giants and the Jets all all year. And it's like, all right, well, <laughs> <laughs> there's a fairness in sport that there isn't in music. That is fair. That is fair. All right, what else we got? 
Um, so I wanted to, to do some of the Discord jokes. Ben Simmons got a max. Wimbledon final, World Cup of Cricket. There's also CB4 quote, quote I sent you guys, and also Pernell Whitaker. If you wanted to, Pernell, yeah, yeah, I was about to say. I, I, I thought, thought I would give you the floor. God, to Pernell, talk about Sweet that. P. Whitaker, rest in peace. This is the greatest uh, defensive boxer, arguably in uh, history. Over Floyd. Uh, some some might say over Floyd, and um, I mean literally impossible to hit, and he ends up dying by getting hit by a car. The the, the great irony okay. <laughs> that that is that literally could not be hit in the ring, and then when he was walking down the street in Virginia Beach, he I mean he was born and raised in Norfolk, I guess he's in Virginia Beach, and he just gets hit by a car and, he, and he fucking died. And but he was truly one of the greatest boxers. I've ever seen in my entire life. I would watch his YouTube compilations of him dodging punches. He had this amazing ability to be within punching range, but not punchable. Mm -hmm. So he was a guy who could stand toe to toe with you. Right. And he just knew exactly what you were going to throw, when you were going to throw, how to dodge it, how to move, and then counter you beautifully. And he was just. He's just one of the best boxers in history. So rest in peace. Yeah. Sweet P, Shout man. out to Max Kellerman, man. I used to watch his show back in the day Max, before he yeah. really blew up. And Pernell Whitaker used to always be on the show. Yeah. And that's how I, I, I kind of really got to know him and how dope he was. Because it was like in the era of when heavyweight boxing was super popping, mm -hmm. like the Tysons, the Holyfields, and all that shit, and just big knockouts were the thing. His show was popping because, like, the, no, no, nobody could hit the motherfucker. Nobody. Like, he was fucking magic in there. So, like, you know, I used to love watching his shit. And, uh, you know, rest in peace to, to Sweet Pete. There's man. a it great sucks. clip. I'm sure it's popping all over Instagram right now. But of uh, the first time that, uh, or when he fought Oscar De La Hoya. And De La Hoya ended up winning the fight by decision. But De La Hoya throws maybe 15 punches in a row at... <laughs> At Pernell Whitaker, and he misses every single punch, like some real deal Matrix type shit. Yeah, and he's just lunging with another one, another one, another one. He just keeps missing. He does a little dance, and then the round ends. And it's like <laughs> that is Sweet Pea right there in a nutshell, just un fucking hittable man. I mean, look at this. Watch this. Here's the clip. Watch. This is. I don't know if this is the exact one I'm thinking of, but there's 15 Ooh. seconds left, so I think maybe. yeah, it's probably gonna and be yet it. Now and it miss. starts maybe. Mm, no, not yet. No, no, here it is. Yes. I heard it is. Boom. Miss, 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 miss. Salsa on that ass. Let's go. I mean, this guy was fucking majestic, dude. Uh, Look at this. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's unreal. But um, Shout out to Judge Mills Lane, man. The legend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is the rap? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, there was something else that, did, uh, that, I, that I texted you today. What was it again? Drake's crib. Uh, no, no, no. We just you just mentioned it. The Discord jokes. Uh, CB4 and Mellow. The tweet. Oh, Ben Simmons. Oh yeah. For some reason, the Philadelphia 76ers have maxed out <laughs> Ben Simmons. Yeah, that was a funny <laughs> laugh, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That was Kaz, by the way. There was no little girl what that just came in the room. What the fuck is going on, Because okay? <laughs> I knew this was gonna be for I could not moment. believe it. How do you max out? Ben Simmons, I, you, he has proven that not only can he not shoot, he doesn't even care to learn. He's been in the league three years. You it, don't even learn how to <laughs> shoot in three years. You know, it's kind of admirable. It's kind of admirable. No, like okay. how no. how does you get good at every? Like he's good at everything. He's six Except nine. the one thing you need to be good at. He's six nine. That's why. It's he's like, a, you know what I like. You know what? Know, know what Ben Simmons is so fucking fascinating to me. He's like the walking analytic study. Like he's the reason. Like the reason why plus minuses and fucking you know uh, true shooting percentages and all this bullshit yep. exists is be he's the product of that shit. I don't think he. Ex I don't think he's treated as a superstar if he blows up like in the nineties. Like if he's like in the eighties and nineties, like I don't think he gets like superstar treatment. I don't think he gets. But he's not good at three, so how's he? That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't think so, because like even even if he's if he can't shoot threes, he can't he can't shoot at all. He doesn't take them. Literally cannot shoot. Like the he does not take you them. Pay like him max money. I, it's how? one thing. That's what I'm how? saying. Like it's one I, thing I if like it. you can't shoot him and you just miss him and shit. He doesn't fucking take them. So like, but he's great passer, great rebounder, great defender, athletic what? as you fuck. You can't play with him. In the playoffs, the guy is—he uh, will single-handedly 
He will lose you. He lose lost you, you series. a game. Yeah. I mean, it'll lose you a series. Yeah. In the playoffs, it really matters. You can't have a guy out there that can't shoot. How do you, you max it out? Him. Can someone tell me how? You you I think in a few. Nobody's going to say it now, but it definitely, you're. I think you're going to be right in a few years. Definitely, if he doesn't start shooting at least this year, you got to at least take one a game. He's got to shoot him. You That's have the only to shoot thing. one a game. Dude, you fucking have to. Even let's say he develops a twelve foot jump shot, fifteen foot jump shot. Just something where you could pump fit. We're well, not going to pump fake a three or anything like that. He has a hook shot. Fuck the hook shot. <laughs> I, t- I want you to be able to stop and pull up. You have to be able to do that. This is the NBA. You mm-hmm. should be able to stop and then pull up. I don't up. even think he needs to stop and pull up. I think you uh, catch and shoot. Let's just try that. Like, a motherfucker's past you in the baseline. Bro, don't even dribble. Just can, catch can the ball. Can you just put one shoot. up? <laughs> Dog, it is embarrassing. Maybe better. Yeah. It's just embarrassing. I can't believe Akash can't go an hour and a half without <laughs> taking a piss. I think that we got to take away your waters. Yeah, you I think sh- we give them a lot of No, water, you're not bro. allowed to drink water during it's the show anymore. Here. No, I'll deal with your talk. thirst. Fact, we'll deal with your thirst. Holy we'll shit. deal with your thirst. The guy cannot go a an hour and a half bladder. sitting down without taking a piss. We need to have like a montage of baby bladder moments with Akash. <laughs> like every time. We got to <laughs> figure. Well, he's the opposite of a camel. Whatever <laughs> a camel can do, Akash is the exact opposite than that. Who can't go an hour without peeing? Son, he's like 4'11. His bladder is about to say, like, the, the, fuck. the trip is quick for that water. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the funny thing is that he pees for bad long. Bad <laughs> long. He'll start before bad me, moment. I go, and then I finish, and he's still going. Really? Yeah. So and I know it's weird that I'm like, from? how's he storing <laughs> all this liquid? <laughs> I'm like observing his pee. <laughs> 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 but it's That's still That's why I tell he goes to the bathroom so much. Yeah. Like, you sit there and oh, study man. this man's pee behavior. I don't even get it. <laughs> I do not get it. Big I dick swear he'd be calling shot. his girl during his pee break, bro. <laughs> That's gotta be it. He gotta check in or some shit. There's no way. Hour and a half mark hits every podcast. He has Here's to butter. pee. <laughs> How is this humanly possible? There's no way you can't hold a pee. I think we gotta restrict water. No, he first of all, there's no more two. He has to ration. <laughs> he has to ration. We have no, to ration him. It's do. just we're gonna give him <laughs> one tiny <laughs> cup of water. He gets a cup. This nah, we gotta treat him like a pregnant bitch. He only gets ice chips. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get from that <laughs> one. <laughs> you gotta deal with that. That's that's what you gotta deal with. That's gonna. I'm we're gonna, gonna give you I'm a full glass of water. We're gonna. I'm no, no, no. I think you can make it through a whole episode if you can do just I'm one to try full glass. I think try. I'm gonna still have to pee. Let's just try. Okay, I, can't, I can't. I mean, it's just unfathomable. Uh, what were we talking about before you? Left? Uh, the Simmons Max. Oh no, no, I don't. I want to get off of this. <laughs> I just think it's such a horribly awful thing to do. Why the fuck would you do it? It's shocking. Um, what else we got? We got where Chris Paul ends up. We got we got where Chris Paul ends up. We got the Discord joke. So we had uh, a picture of Carl Anthony Towns' fake off whites that we put oh, up yeah. on the Patreon, mm. and yeah, I Akash put it that. up in the Discord. And the Discord had some jokes about it. So we're gonna see if you guys are funny. Let's you see. Got, let's let's see. Where we go. All right. So. Makram Merham. He's an effing bum. Why do you say effing? I don't know why. He's a why fucking bum He's laughing a, my ass I off. Let a, I let a holy shit out there in the Nike uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, well done. Well Dude done. cares about his shoe game like he I'll cares about, about his career. Bit. Doesn't give a fuck. Nah. Eh. Makram, we could do better. Next. Next. Cat broke his Nike. Yo, I got my own emoji. <laughs> Look at this shit. I got my yeah. own emoji oh, in the Discord hot. if it's that's funny. That's tight. Cat brought his Nikes from that store. Akash was running in India. That's good. That's <laughs> funny. Cat rocking the Gujarati force. <laughs> Shout out to Vanessa Hudgens. That's good. I like that one. Live footage of Kaz trying to get some authentic <laughs> shoes. That's good. <laughs> I should have started with this one, Eddie. That's good. And now, for those of you guys who can't see, it's a picture of Cat trying to back boogie down and he just cannot move him at all. All right, Slim Reaper said, them <laughs> shoes still worth more than any WNBA team. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Uh, that's good. This is definitely the new Megan rapping those Nikes she deserves. Yeah. Sauce Boss. Oh, oh, Megan rapping those Nikes she deserves. Oh, you just read the tweet. Okay. Yeah. Sauce Boss, I need you to come harder with the... Okay, I'll read Kaz, this one you for read you. the next <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think that the nigga saving money on this nigga was able to find a way to pay for his mustache to reach his beard. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 
So okay. what if you if your mustache can't reach <laughs> But y'all talking mm. about that's sometimes that happens. Okay. Aww. Looks like Cat and Act got the same style. Oh, because they got Act with the fake Supreme he was rocking. <laughs> How did he tell? Huh? How can you tell if that's fake Supreme? I don't know. Supreme just never released that. Ah, okay. That I was, was like, they never made that? Oh, shit. No. Well, well, all right, Discord. Y'all did all right. Yo, it was, all yeah, right. was, was right. a couple, a couple bangers. Y'all, y'all came harder Bunch before. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are the good ones that I got sent. Um, <laughs> now, do we want to talk where CB3 goes? There's also a, a CB a Chauncey Billups quote that I sent. Oh, I love Ellen. it, uh, Ed, Ellen. Ellen, the mellow thing. Um, <laughs> Ellen. Yeah, Ellen, oh. can, you, can you pull that up, please? Wait, are we gonna call him Ellen? From Ellen. Now? Hey, yo, Dude, it's DJ Ellen. Ellen, bro, that's your new nickname. You are gonna get all the gigs. Ellen the generous. Some diversity uh, shit. Swag. Oh. <laughs> Ellen about to start dancing. And so shit. basically, Chauncey Billups, you don't need to post it up. Chauncey Billups basically said this. He goes, you know, Melo is an unbelievable player. The problem is that he always cared uh, too much about scoring thirty, and he goes. The team, he might score 20 and the team would win, and he wouldn't be that enthusiastic. But if he scored 30 and the team lost, he'd be going around the locker room like, come on, guys, we got that. This, that, the other. <laughs> I hate those guys. Son. I hate those guys, That's bro. Mello. That's what Chauncey said. Mello, and Chauncey said, guys. and I've said this to Mello, scoring 30 means more to you than winning. And then he said that story of like, yo, they would win, but Mello wouldn't put up points and he'd be down and he'd out. upset. Jesus Christ. He'd sounds be upset. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. And that's and that's and he basically was saying like that's why he's not in the league. He's like he deserves to be in the league the way he can play. And he's score. elite talent. He's elite talent, but <clears throat> he just cares too much about them buckets, man. I talked to uh, Justin Jackson over the weekend, Sac- Sacramento Kings. Yep. He's been on North Carolina Tar Heels, whatever. And we was just, me and Van and Van was there. It was like just talking about like what's the difference between the league and just like regular shit. It's like there's way more politics than you think. Like there's so many people that should be in the league that aren't in the league for like political ass shit. Like, I was like, I was like, is that like how the Mellish is going? I was like, yeah, you could say that. Like there's so, like there's so many people in the league that don't deserve to be in the NBA, but they it's just it's crazy know how you can take our point, agree with it, and then make a point that completely disagrees with our point. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> It causes conversation, crazy? doesn't it? He's like, no, I actually, I, I do see what you mean because Melo deserves to be in the league. No, because no, it's just politics is why he's not here. No, he deserves to be in the league, but like, I'm just saying, it's it's an addition to it. It's not if just if you have the right agent. Yeah, listen, if you're a bum, the right agent can keep you in the league. Absolutely. If you're elite, you're a, you're elite. There's not a single elite player that's not in the league. Yeah, right, because talent is you Which know is what Melo should the be. commodity, mm-hmm. and Melo is elite at one thing. Scoring a basket and only wants to be elite at one thing. And only wants to be elite at one thing. Well, Jar Smith is available now. You think he makes a team before Melo? Absolutely. I think he's. Yeah. I think they already said he's going to LA, right? Or that was the That's conversation the piece. He That's got released, released just released now. This yeah. Yeah. He just sent me the story. Yeah. Even though he didn't get the text I sent him. Who Ellen? Uh, <laughs> Ellen. Yeah. Oh. Yo, Ellen. What were maybe you saying? I sent it to Ed and not Ellen, and maybe that's why I got fucked Probably, up. Probably. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Ellen, 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 you really time. don't like that name, you Ellen ass Ellen? <laughs> Stupid fucking Ellen. <laughs> fucking Ellen. <laughs> fucking Ellen, bro. <laughs> fucking Ellen, bro. Oh, Yo, show us your pussy, Ellen. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow, all right. Can we play the... Uh... Yo, remember back in the day when you could say that to your secretary? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, back in the day, if you just worked at like an ad agency, we're talking about like the fifties, like you could be like on the phone trying to sell like Goodyear tires, and then that shit wouldn't go well. You'd be pissed off. You'd be like, Patricia, come here, show me your pussy. I'm pissed off a little bit. <laughs> like that was just part of your day, right? Pour me a scotch and show me your cunt. Come on. It's like Mad Men. You ever watch that show? Yeah. That's what, that's what like. he just described. Yeah. Episode yeah. one. Yeah. Literally, that's how it worked. Okay, Ellen. <laughs> so tuck that cock between your legs and show us that fucking China. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's funny. I think um, those weirdo chicks with that dress weird and what all the tattoos. I just think that pussy's different. Goths? Yeah, like the weirdo joints. Like the Portland women. Yeah, yeah. The pale bitches. Yeah, that the got pale tattoos. bitches. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, you watch Euphoria? No. I heard that shit is wild. It's a wild show. Oh, I heard that's a great show. Hold on, what were you it. saying about these? Portland I don't know. Bitches? It was just an obs- observation. Wait, I just, what about them? That their pussies are different? Yeah, just different in a way that I, I just don't know. Like. Like, like how? Like, like the they... land of the unexplored and you just have it. <laughs> I don't get it. But how does their pussies look? Like you know how they say Asians are sideways? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we going there now? <laughs> <laughs> wait, we <laughs> might have to edit that. Yo, the far Rockaway coming out of this dude right now. <laughs> we might have to edit that. Yo, one. first of all, can I? Can I? Let me just ask y'all something about this. So, no, 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 no. I gotta ask. No, I gotta ask. Yeah, help this. Me, help no, me I gotta ask so. this, right? Because, all right, look, right? They say Asian girls' pussies are sideways, right? <laughs> Who and says then, that? Oh, you never heard that? That's a very common yeah, that's thing. That's a common That's a common thing. So, they say Asian thing. girls' pussies are sideways, right? That's like a common, like, joke, right? And then you ask your friends, like, yo, why why they say that shit? And they're like, yo, because their eyes be like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the eyes ain't the different. Eyes ain't the, the they eyes just squint it. Down like yeah, this. They're not a lizard. Right? <laughs> their eyes is just more closed. So you could say their pussy is more closed, but not their pussy are sideways. Where did sideways I come? Don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Alex, why'd you think? Why are we tell racist? Us I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Open up sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Please like, tell this us, is, this, yo, this, Alan, Alan. Pull, it, pull it up, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to get to the bottom of this. Why do you think Asian girls pussy? Like, where was the logic in your head when you first, <laughs> like, when you hooked up with your first Asian girl? Did you like slide your hand in there like opposite? Does like you slid it, you slid it down on, like a metro card. <laughs> 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 Yo, like, you know how you finger a girl like this? Like, you go down there and go like that? Like, yeah. did you go down there with the intent to, like, go back? Like, windshield <laughs> wipers? <laughs> Yo, son, like, and you clean out too. a gutter it full worked. of leaves, bro? You <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Is that what Shout you out did? to the Asians, man. I love y'all. Shout I out never to the Asians, thought bro. Asians girl, pussies were sideways. Yeah, that was just stupid. I thought they were a little <laughs> smaller, though. They are small. Yeah. They got to fit, you know, everything's wow. made for the... <laughs> Built for elasticity. Damn. Can, can we say that? Of course, look, a first baseman like, or oh, a softball damn. mitt is bigger, <laughs> do you know what I mean, than the baseball mitt. No, Did you just Google no. sideways nah, pussy? Yeah, some of stuff. Uh, oh, okay. No. <laughs> Not with that. No, no sideways pussy. What? A pedophile joke. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. be wild. That's a wild ass joke, son. Alex thought of a wild ass fucking joke, bro. Well, you're not going to say it? I'm going to say it just because I'm going to say it. Basically, I was doing this Comedy Central, this this shit, this uh, last week, this week at the Comedy Cellar. Comedy Cellar, right, right. And they gave us some topics we got to write bits out. So we coming back from Toronto Sunday, right? And I'm like, all right, Al, what, you got anything for this, man? I can't think of nothing. It was this Jeffrey Epstein guy, right? And you were like, quiet. he's, he's <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein is this billionaire who was like a pedophile, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, yo, like, maybe he's just got a small dick, <laughs> right? And then I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, that's why he fucks girls, like, cause that's what fits. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! <laughs> so, 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 son, he said that shit, wow. bro. Right? And what you it, nervous for, Alex? Your boss you got, right here. You're he not gonna say fire you. Nothing to lose, bro. So and I you thought good. it was good. Yo, hundreds of thousands of people listen to this yo, shit. Yo. So. Mm. so this is where it gets even Fuck crazier, right? You behind a camera? Yeah, that was Ellen. This is where he gets. This is where it gets <laughs> crazy, right? Yo, then he goes. I don't know if it was you or me that said the R. Kelly shit. Yeah, yeah, it was said, you. Yeah. Okay, then he goes. He goes, and then R. Kelly. Like maybe he had a micro penis too, you know. And it's like, and he, cause he fucks, little, he fucks younger girls too, right? But they're a little bit older, cause yeah, he had a micro penis, but, but it's he's a black, black one, <laughs> so it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> 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 I thought it was a good joke. I mean, funny, stop, funny I thought idea. it was good. I thought it was pretty good. Oh, yeah. I, I liked it. I used it. You know, for the Comedy Central <laughs> shit. Oh yeah, I like the premise. Slap. I like the premise. It, hit? it was all right. It, you know, the, the line with the R. Kelly shit hit. The yeah. line, you know, because that's like the clever, like absurd yeah. one. But there's no way in fucking hell that they would post that. <laughs> there's no fucking way. But I think it's funny. It's about gonna be hilarious. I'm watching Comedy Central this week, and that's the clip. That <laughs> I, yo, that's a funny joke about like the way I the way I switched the joke when I did for the comedy social shit. I said uh, I, I was I was watching I was walking by this Epstein protest mm. and I saw all these women holding up signs like you micro penis piece of shit you small dick pedophile bastard and I started thinking like oh shit maybe that's why he's a pedophile mm. so I made them like yeah because mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's what fits yeah you know what I mean and then they're like oh and I'm like guys. This is just physics. It's not. <laughs> like, I don't have any stake in the. In, you know, he's just trying to find th something. Alex said I went too far. My thing on Epstein was that like he was kind of genius. 
Okay. Because like, remember like back in the day how like you know weed was illegal in, yeah. in America, so we would go to Amsterdam to smoke right. weed where it was legal. Right. And it's like, well, fucking girls was illegal in America, so he bought an island. They didn't have rules. <laughs> 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 he just had pedophile Amsterdam, and then <laughs> he got he got his own little Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. So that didn't make oh, it. Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> you should have hit the cutting room floor. God damn it. We'll see. We'll see Ooh. if we get some shit. All right, what else we got before we gotta get? You want to talk here? about Drake's career? You want to talk about where CP3 is going next? What else we got? We got anything outside Wimbledon? Box? Wimbledon was fucking wild. Oh, yeah, you care so about I'm, tennis. Make us a... I, go, might, go ahead. Oh, I might be wrong. I might end up... I don't know how much longer they're going to say Roger Federer is the greatest ever. This is why I say he's the greatest ever, because the top three tennis players of all time, men's-wise, are all playing right now. And mm-hmm. he is playing against the other two all the time. And pretty much any tournament that gets won is getting won by one of them. So to have the most wins of all time... Playing, playing against, against number two and number... There's no sport where this has ever happened. Right. It's like Michael Jordan playing against Bill Russell and whoever your third best player is. Now, now again, this is me just throwing out something else here, but uh, some might say that Michael Jordan was so much more elite than his competitors right. that there wasn't even a situation where the three best could be playing at the same time So because he just won everything. Tournaments always, first of all, it starts with like 64 people and then you work your way up to. The fact that the finals is always these three guys, two mm-hmm. of these three. Means that they're all the they're same. They're all the yeah. best. Yeah. And he's been, his first Grand Slam, they have like four majors like golf. Yeah. His first win was 2003. And he's still competitive. And tennis, you're supposed to stop being good around 30. Now technology, the guy who beat him is five years younger, and he might end Djokovic. up with more wins. Djokovic yeah. might end up with more wins than Federer even. It's so fucking crazy. That, I've never seen a sport that this that's this top heavy. Right. And ma- at 37 years old, the guy's playing tennis for five fucking hours. Unbelievable. It was. It's the longest match final of that tournament's history. I, I, I saw years. this. It could have been a clickbait article. That it said he sleeps like 12 hours a day. Is that real? I don't know. I just know... He is. I've never seen anybody make anything look easier. Why? Than he makes why tennis okay, look. so what I don't understand, and maybe it's just age, but he loses in the final. Yeah. But all the articles are about how incredible he is. He's thirty-seven. There's thirty-seven. So we uh, also love him, and we don't like the other guy, Djokovic. And yeah. I, he was kind of young and punkish. And it, there's something about him that, like, he gets really upset when the the crowd <laughs> cheers for the other player. And everybody just loves Federer. He's very classy, but not like phony. Like I remember. 10 years ago whatever when he was just beating the shit out of everybody Mm -hmm. they asked him after he won a tournament and he was like yeah I don't know I'm just really playing unbelievable it's just like (laughs) it's really crazy it it wasn't like cocky it was like I don't get it it's just unbelievable he was very like sheepish about it it was was just like he owns it but he's not being an asshole yeah Yeah. it was like he wasn't trying to brag he's like and he's right that's one thing I do love about tennis though like how they get like interviewed like it's a sitcom and like the fucking the crowd it's like a laugh track (laughs) it's always like a fucking episode of Family Matters after every fight Final. There's a cool thing. I grew up, my uncle loved tennis, and that was like my dad, so like I just got into it. Yeah. But like, there's little cool moments. I remember a tournament, like, think about the entire arena rooting for one other guy. It's mm-hmm. two people on the court, <laughs> and everybody hates you because you're not this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one match like five, six years ago. He was playing Federer. Everybody, U.S. Open's cheering for Federer. Mm. Federer's got match point, and he's serving, and serving's like a big advantage. So Djokovic looks up. Everybody's on their fucking feet. He just looks up. And then he just goes, okay, okay. And then he gets into a turn stance, hits the serve back, this crazy shot. And then he just stands and stares at the crowd for like 15 seconds. And I just like, <laughs> there's some a Coliseum type yeah. shit to it. It's just like dope. Two men enter, one yeah, man leave and it, this shit. is just like, if you like greatness, this is a cool time to watch tennis. Do you <laughs> think he'll win another major? He's, I don't know if Federer will because he's 37 and this guy like, just looks kind He's of unstoppable. He's going to be in the way every time. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, be, and then he'll the he'll other guy, Nadal, there. there's one tournament that he wins every year. Like yeah. the, the, he has 13 the French Garros. Opens, and the number two guy has like five French Opens Nadal in history. Because Nadal is on clay. Clay, unstoppable. 13 French Opens, which is clay. Number two of all time is like five or something like that. Like it's insane. Is he? How much worse is he on the other uh, He's fields? not as good. At, uh, he's like noticeable. He's just definitely not as good. He's not awful, but he's definitely not as good. And those other two are good on any surface. Is tennis the only sport that has multiple surfaces? I think so, yeah. It's kind of weird, isn't it? No, football. I think it developed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, football turf, has grass, uh, turf, and grass, grass, turf, and, uh, and sometimes uh, baseball fields. But there was also like, there was an AstroTurf, Astro and there oh, was yeah, a fake yeah. turf. That, oh, that's interesting. I think it might have developed out of necessity where they just like, the U.S. 
you, they, it's too expensive to maintain grass courts. Mm. So they had clay and French had clay. Then concrete came around. Yeah. And they were like, yo, this is even easier to maintain, cheaper to maintain. Let's do that. So, so now the most US tournaments. Is concrete. Yeah, now most tournaments are concrete because it's just the easiest. Put this in one time. It's going to last the longest. Not much maintenance. Let's just stick with Have that. Have you played on grass? I haven't played on anything except the hard court. And I also haven't played in like 15 years since high school and a little bit of college. Do they say it's that different when you play on grass? Apparently it it's like much wildly different. Wildly different. Yeah, grass is supposed to be real fast. I was about to say, like, I feel like the... Oh, I the, feel like you slip around all the time. You slip yeah. around. That's a thing you got to account for. On clay, you got to account for slipping. Hard court. Oh, that's you right. Clay be, slides like crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, in hard court, you can't slide. You'll tear your fucking ACL. So you got to play differently on all three surfaces. Mm. Mm. That's, That's the thing with these sports. Yeah. They don't know how to market them, man. I, I almost maybe one day when we're fucking old, we'll have a marketing agency where we help sports <laughs> out because, like, to me. That's how you sell. We'll get tennis exciting. Yeah, like, yeah. like yes, we understand the tennis fans get it, but the casuals, like, tell me that, tell me that someone could bust their ACL unless they play different on this concrete. Tell me this clay shit is going to be different. Like, show me the new stimulus every time I watch. It's exciting. There's a monotony to baseball, right? There is yeah. a monotony to basketball, even, right? A lot of people go, oh, I'll just watch the fourth quarter. And tennis can be monotonous. There's, there's, you never know when the point's going to come. It's like a crazy rally, but like. Right. I'll zone out. I'm not like a fanatic. I enjoy it, but I'll zone out early in a match. Right. But like, I also just love individual sports and like seeing like this guy, Novak Djokovic used to choke all the time. And me as a guy. He got over it. He just got over it. Now he's a fucking champion. And you see one person get over this thing. Like Jordan had to conquer it, but he has teammates. He's the best by far, but right. he got teammates. If it's just fucking you doing anything, mm. yeah. it's crazy. And you're not even allowed to consult with your coach. That's, That's what Serena, got in, yeah. That's what Serena yeah. got in trouble for. Yeah. for and you know it's bad marketing because <laughs> you said to me, he's like, oh, I went 35 years and I never understood the point the scoring, scoring process. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching the... You love white sports. I was watching the... <laughs> he was watching the Wimbledon, yeah. The, yeah. the thing when we were at the airport. And um, it dawned on me, I truly don't know how it's scored. Yeah, it's weird. It goes like 15, zero, 30, 15, 40. 30, 40. Love, love is if you, when if you, love is point zero. game. Oh, no, no. Love is zero. Love is zero. 15, 15 30, 30, 40. 40 and then you game. win. And if you both have 40, that's a deuce. And then it's basically win by two. Win by two. And then when you win that thing, that's called a, a game. game. Mm. And you need how many games to be a set? Six. If you're tied at six, you go to a tiebreaker. Right. That's what you were explaining to yeah, me. yeah. yeah. So the first so it's to six. Six win by two. Win by two. Or and straight seven. Or straight seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Six win by two or straight seven. But then the last set, that's why it went that long. It and was like a tiebreaker. So that shit just kept going back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. How many sets do you need? Guys need to win four sets? Guys need to win five or uh, three. Three Best sets. Best of five. Women need to win, win two. two. Yeah. And that's why the girls' game is shorter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that that's why it can go on forever because if they're tied. Yeah, and there's only certain tournaments that are like the the Grand Slams. I think three of the four have these thing where you've got to win by two. And then Wimbledon had an Andy Roddick Roger Federer match where the last set that. was yeah. like fifty. It was like forty nine to fifty one or something crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they were like, let's. And there was another game. It wasn't important, but it went like eighty to seventy nine or something mm -hmm. like the eighty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, look, after twelve, we're just going to do tie breaks, and we're not going to fucking do this anymore. So that means whoever wins wins. It's so at the, it was twelve it was all. Like they went to it. Yeah, they went right. to a tie break. Mm. Yeah, no. Well, maybe we should go to the U.S. Open. When is it? It's late August, yeah, September. Right? Yeah, yeah, late August, early September. I've been there before. It was super fun. Yeah, I go went to a too. night match. Yeah. And we should buy tickets to like one of the later games, like where it's good people playing. Yeah, yeah. and we should. It's a great atmosphere well, too. Like, you know what I kind of liked? I, uh, I was walking around, and sometimes you have guys that were really popular when we were kids, right? And they're kind of falling off, but they're still professionals. They're right. still playing, mm -hmm. right? So, like a journeyman NBA player will still be on an NBA team. Yeah. But again, like you said, it's an individual sport. Yeah. So there was a guy named Leighton Hewitt. Remember yeah, him? I remember Leighton Hewitt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he was like at one point he, he won. was incredible. Yeah. yeah. His saw, whole game was just, I'm going to make you fuck up. Yeah. I will. I have Return unlimited everything. fitness. Yeah, I yeah. will get every ball back until you fuck up. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I think well, they said Agassi was good at that too, right? Return anything. Didn't he, he could have return like anything, but like within the, that's like whatever serve you hit, I can get it back. Lane Hewitt's game is like, I'm not going to try to hit crazy shots. I'm just going to make you hit one more every time. And, and I'll wait for you, you to fuck right? yeah. 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 Okay. So I saw him play because again, when the US Open happens, all these matches are happening at the same time. Like you said, there's 64 yeah. people. They need yeah. to whittle them down. So not every match is on the big one with the stadium. There's like the ones on the side that only fit like 100 people Fam. and shit. Yeah. I'm watching this Leighton Hewitt guy that I saw in Sports Center. I didn't know anything about right. tennis or anything. Mm. There's two bleachers. Yeah. Literally 
Yeah. Two rows of seats. He's right there. You could, I could have walked right on the tennis right. court and just <laughs> yeah. interrupted a fucking game, got a selfie if I wanted. Mm. It's rare you get to see. Yeah. It this, felt like Summer League. Sport, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. NBA yeah. Summer League, where you're just that fucking close in the action. So maybe maybe we could do some flagrant shit. Maybe we could like get some tickets and cook Son, up some I'm content. I'm down. I'm down. I'm going with my cousin regardless. So like. Oh, you're like, uh, you're into it. You're. Uh, yeah, especially US Open at night. It's also kind of like a fun because it's, it's New fun. Yorkers. So like London is mad classy. Like if the other guy makes a mistake, Steak, yeah, you're yeah. not supposed to cheer. That's like an unwritten tennis rule. Yeah. New York at night, if we like Federer, and they love yeah. everybody loves Federer. Like even yeah. in America, he's more popular than like the great American champions, like Pete Sampras or whoever. Yeah, yeah. If Federer is in a tight match and the other guy fucks up, they don't care. We're yelling shit, we're clapping, we're getting rowdy. Like it's New York. You know what I mean? It's still New York. Even if it's classier motherfuckers that like tennis, it's still New York. And it's kind of fun. I still like the fact that like they'll cheer while crazy, but Everybody shuts up right before. Yeah, they oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like quiet. Yeah. It's like they yeah. still respect them. It's like, yo, we're gonna give you your quiet for yeah, so you yeah. can play. That it's shit is that dope. golf yeah. shit too, right? Like, aren't you supposed to not make a sound? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you tee off, yeah. but then you can say whatever. As soon as it hits, like, get in the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, shit, all right, maybe we pull it up. I'm with it, I'm guys. With it. Um, <laughs> that has been another episode of Flagrant Two. Why don't we? Why don't we tell some people what where we're going to be at, man? Oh, this yeah. weekend I will be in Detroit, Michigan for Duce Palooza at the Masquer- Masquerade. Masquerade? Oh, sorry. Yes, this Friday, the Masquerade. No, sorry about that. This Friday, Detroit, Michigan, July 19th, uh, Wale will be performing, full set, performing his new single uh, on Chill with Jeremiah, which will be really tight. And uh, let me just pull up the other DJ before I fucking forget. Uh, goddamn. Uh, shit. You can go ahead, uh, Andrew. Fuck. Can't find the shit. I'm sorry. Cass, <laughs> Cass struggling. Over yeah, here. I'm trying, Cass bro. Cass struggling. Yo, God I'm going to be at the uh, Montreal uh, Comedy Festival. I'm going to be. Uh, shit, here it is. Going up this week, I'll do, I'm going to do the uh, Nasty Show, which is a series. If you guys are in Montreal, there's going to be a bunch of very funny comics on it. But uh, we're also going to do uh, Inside Jokes and Unsafe Sets up there. So I think the Unsafe Set Show is sold out. I think Inside Jokes might be sold out, but it, it's pretty close. And um, I'm excited to do it, man. I, I'm excited just to be up there. So I'll be up there for the next couple weeks. Alex is going to come up not this weekend but the next weekend for the uh, unsafe sets and inside joke shows and he'll be capturing some of the um uh, nasty shows as well and uh but yeah if you're in if you're in montreal definitely pull up come by you know um that'll be a lot of that'll be a lot of fun and then <clears throat> i'll also be uh after that going to tokyo if you got any advice about tokyo Mm. Uh, I'll be there from the second. Andrew's finally 11th. taking a vacation, guys. I'm gonna take a little vacation. Nice. I need a little nice. vacation. Nice. You still doing Burning Man? You doing two vacations um, or this the one? There's Burning Man has to do with some news that I'm. I want to tell you guys, but I can't tell it just yet. But I want to tell about. Um, you know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, I don't. I'll tell oh, you. Yeah. You do know. But uh, so Burning Man is dependent on that because I might have to be here to oversee some shit. And, yeah. But gotcha. hopefully I can. You guys don't. Yeah. But hopefully we'll be able to share that in a second. And then, um, but after I get back from Tokyo, uh, we're going to be back on the road again. Matador tour. Come see us in D.C. Uh, what is it? The 15th through the Mad 17th shows. or something like that. Yeah, August. I think, uh, I mean, we're there the Thursday, 18th. Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. A uh, bunch of shows. TheAndrewShows.com for that. Then we're going to be out there in Chicago. Um, the first show sold out for Chicago, so we added another show. Thalia Hall, beautiful theater there in Chicago, man. Pull up. Can't wait to see all motherfuckers out there. And um, then we're going to be hitting up. I think we have another date. And then we got Russia. Russia. Then we're going to be in Australia. Those tickets for Australia are moving, by the way. If you haven't got them, get them now because their nice. shit is about to be gone. And I'm, remember, I'm not coming there all the fucking time. So <laughs> get on that shit. Tell your friends. Spread the fucking word. Keep it flagrant. And then um, and then theandrewshows.com. We keep adding more and more shows. So I'm very excited for y'all to continue seeing this. This is crazy seeing us go from clubs to to theaters. To and sold like, out theaters. It's just mm. a wild experience, man. That's so, a dream. And to see the audiences, man, it's just like leaning into the flagrancy to see the comics that I have open because I'm sp- I specifically choose guys that that fuck with the flagrancy and to see them perform in front of a crowd that ap- that actually embraces, embraces it, it. And yeah. embraces like dark humor and fucked up jokes and like gets off on it when they come off stage it's so crazy because they're like 
yo, your crowd is fucking unreal. I'm dealing with these <laughs> PC motherfuckers all the time, and and I'm like scared to tell some jokes. And all of a sudden, I tell this one fucked up joke, and they're going crazy. I mean, bravo. Anyway, they love y'all, so it's a treat for them to perform for you guys as well, man. So so yeah, theandrewsouls.com. Get all those dates. Cast off. My fault. Finally got the, sh- the right fucking information. Went the majestic, not the masquerade. My fault. Detroit in uh four four one four zero Woodward Avenue. Uh, DJ Twist, uh, DJ Slick B, DJ BJ will all be spinning. My boy Chris Styles, low key hosting. Wale will be performing his new uh, album single and as much as other shit. And uh, pull up this Friday, man. And if you're going to Complex Con after that, uh, hit me up. I should be around there as well. Akash, all you. Yo, we're building out this tour. Uh, I'm headlining. I'm bringing my boy Donish Magbul along to feature. A uh, very funny comic. So we are going to Houston, September 6th at the Secret Group. Group two shows. 8 and 10.30. Then the 7th, we're in Austin at the Fallout Theater at 7 o'clock. We're there again on the 8th. Fallout Theater, 7 o'clock. Uh, September 13th, San Francisco, Piano Fight, two shows, 8 and 10.30. September 19th, the Comedy Store in the Belly Room, 8 p.m. September 20th, Portland, Sick. Curious Comedy, 7 th- uh, 7.30. And then October 5th, Minneapolis, two shows, 8 and 10 at Sisyphus Brewing. And also, I'm doing another ABDC show. We're calling ourselves Brownish now. Nobody knew what the fuck uh, <laughs> this he meant so we're calling ourselves brownish and uh, we will be at New York Comedy Club on 4th Street August 15th okay. yes, be a hot show come through Andrew Sounds if you're in good. town come through Kaz I'm if you're in town I'm come pulling through up. pulling up I'm man pulling got up. to bro I'm pulling up absolutely um, guys thank y'all so much for listening to Flagrant 2 spreading the word spreading the, uh, spreading the flagrancy but keeping them fingers tight um, oh fuck very important message thank you Al and maybe we should put this in the beginning as well. So this is going to be the second time you heard this. But the Flagrant 2 YouTube channel is up. We are separating the YouTube channels. Uh, I mean, this is what happens when you guys watch fucking YouTube videos and shit <laughs> starts to blow up, man. So we're going to give Flagrant 2 its own YouTube channel. Please go subscribe. I put a in, uh, link in my Instagram. I'll put another one up tomorrow. Um, and What's the actual uh, URL? So we can't get a custom URL until we get 100 subscribers. Got it, okay. Um, which I think we have now. But we just I just posted about it yesterday. Let me go check. And um, and But basically, please go subscribe to that. Uh, also, the same thing for Brilliant Idiots. Please go subscribe to that as well. So uh, we are just breaking these channels up so that we can put more content out on each one and everyone doesn't get over flooded and i'm just very excited about it man thank you all so much for watching the videos and sharing them and seeing these num- these videos do big numbers is, is super exciting for us so uh thanks again man just for always support what we do here so go go please i'm asking you guys please go subscribe to the flagrant 2 youtube the brilliant idiots youtube as well because that's where you're going to be able to watch these videos the clips and the full video every week there all right guys that's been another episode of flagrant 2 peace god bless